All right, so let's make this chat a little bigger and this one's a little smaller. All right, tomorrow is the launch day. So let's make some predictions on um on it, uh, how it's going to go. Uh, my, uh, I suspect it's not gonna. <laughs> I suspect the shit's gonna die like a... I'll bring it back down a little bit. I need to be able to see that. That preview off, that preview off, reset, reset. So you're telling me I'm able to record 180 FPS in two, well, effectively 180 FPS. 120 on the right OBS, 60 on the left. 60, this is the OB, this is the YouTube stream. This is like, like the Twitch stream and also the local recording. I'm able to do both, and on an A380, an Intel A380, it's only at roughly 70% 3D and like 32% encode. I don't know, or video decode. I don't know why it's saying video decode. There's video processing, cute. I, I don't understand like all the different things. Video decode and video decode one. Oh, look. Okay, so there's two video decodes. Wait, does does the Intel Arc have two quick sync uh, two uh, quick sync encoders? Because there's a video decode here that's really low, and there's one over here that's really low. Like, and another thing is what's confusing is the three D being as low as as it is. There's got to be some like OBS black magic optimization that's happening, because if I try to record, if I was to change this setting, either to streaming, either, 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 either try to stream or record with X264, not quick, quick sync H264. Um, if I do the CPU X264 instead of quick sync, the GPU 3D usage skyrockets. Which makes, well, in my mind, that makes sense, and it should be up high, because the three, I'm pretty sure the 3D is actually measuring the compositing of OBS. So, like, you know, like, let's say if I had, like, a, a text thing here, like, go text, and I added, like, text to the screen, you know, like, like that, that's only popping up on Twitch. <laughs> but, um, imagine, like, that, no, no, it's not. It is. I need to teleport. I mean, okay. I need to use teleport for the whole thing. So, is it? So let's just remove that, and then we teleport. Now we should have both on both. So if I put the text here, yes. So we dropped a little bit of frames there, and I think that's I mean, the GPU usage did go up, but I also do have the preview on both. And I've also, like, teamed it into this machine. 
and TP, uh, team viewer uses a lot of GPU. I need to find like a lower performance. Hello, bear. That's not good. Oh, that's really rough. Uh, is there, I gotta, there's gonna be a way to fix that. Other than fucking team viewer. Wait, echo. Oh. Uh, true. Good, good point on that. Good point. Good point. Good, good call. Good call, my dude. Okay. I just, I didn't realize what I just did. Added an echo. This is why we're doing this stream today. I'm getting all the. Oh, come on! Don't be doing this. Is it because teleports at nine? What if I go back to ninety-five? Are you gonna like be a little bitch about it? Yes, you're gonna you're still being a little bitch about it. Okay, what if I go capture card and I remove teleport for this? Is it still encoding this teleport even though like Oh it might be. Oh it was. It was double okay, so obviously there's no way in hell I can double encode that. Okay, so we're good. So, huge progress last night. I got, oh, that being at 90, I don't like that. I like having a little bit of headroom. At least a little bit. But I am pushing this card to its absolute fucking limit. <laughs> it's just, I want, I don't need the YouTube stream to be at 60 FPS. I just want it to be. If I was to lower the YouTube stream to 30, it would w work a lot better. But then the Twitch, the Twitch stream would always still be at the higher, like, number. But, like, the YouTube stream is more important. In my opinion. But, yeah, this GPU is getting hard fucked, man. Like... Whew. And this is just for video encode. I'm doing nothing else. This is why, um, this is this here is why I got a second computer for this. So, there's sh So, oh, I think, wait, what? What did I do? Oh, you mean, because I said YouTube streams is a more important one. Okay, I see what you mean, yeah. Uh, it's just, another reason I wanted to be 60 is because, like, the VODs will always be on YouTube unless I delete them. So having, like, just in case I, like, oh, I don't want to, I don't, like, do anything with the VOD, though at least be 1080p 60 footage, still it's chilling. What is this? I don't feel comfortable with the GPU being this fucking pinned. Like, I mean, I guess it won't be because team I'm team viewed in, and I I could turn off. See, I have another monitor that's plugged into that computer, but it's also my third monitor, And I don't really have another place to put this other monitor that I have to plug into that. And it's like, I don't know what to do. Except maybe just let it sit here. Because right now it's like, that's 18% GPU usage. This is going straight to team viewers bullshit. But though, like, I'm telling you though, like, the, the, the you're like, why the fuck are you recording at uh, 60, uh, 120 FPS? And it's like, bro... Let's go. Let's go look at why uh, and straw man my own content. Um, if we go look at like where's like a really big file size from the past couple of days, because that would have been when I was playing COD or something. Ten gigs. Well, that was when I was surfing. Okay, now we're, we want to look for the 20 gig ones. Because when playing COD, it's closer to 20 gigs instead of 10. Okay, well, there's none. No, I'm in the wrong place. I'm fucking trolling. It's November. When did the last time I played COD? Like the 
third maybe that's a 17 gig that's probably a cod yeah that's a cod vod i think it's a good one okay so like this is normal speed all right now you're not going to notice much now because it's going to look on youtube it, in i guess unless you're on twitch or have a high refresh rate monitor on twitch 1080p so my main monitor is 1080p 240 and my other two are both 1080 60s no 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 my one on the right is my old 1440p uh, 1440p, um, 1440, uh, 144 hertz. So, this is normal speed. Now we go back. This is half speed. And you might notice that the video looks equally as, well, besides when the Jaggies go away, it looks equally as smooth because it's so, f it, this is, this is now displaying back at 60 FPS because 120 divided by 2 is 60, blah, 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 blah. And it's smooth as hell. And then if I was to go even more and go down to a quarter speed, this is 30 FPS. Now you can, you can tell it's 30 FPS. It's a little like, because it will be a little like shaky or a little like choppy in, in times, but it is incredibly slow. Like this slow motion, I'm still falling from the kill. Like, and it's like, I love this so much. Like I don't, I, for you think, Okay, well, why the fuck do you need crazy slow-mo footage when all you do is, like, sit here and, like, look at a fucking, like, the 90E for, like, 10 hours a day? It's like, okay, yeah, but, like, look at it. It's so smooth. Before, I couldn't really do this and stream on one PC. Like, I could probably have done this on, like, lower intensive games, like you know, Minecraft or whatever, or some other, like, game, but, like, doing this on COD on one PC is, like, damn near impossible. It just ran like a dick. Why was that dropping frames? I mean, that's okay if it skips, if we drop a, a little bit occasionally. I got to figure this out. Because it drops, it's at 1.1, 1 .1, that's not good. That's not good. Now, is it because... No, it can't be because of that. I don't know what it is, what it's because of. It could be, again, because team viewers on it. But the thing is, this video decode is like 99%. So maybe that's like... Maybe that's it. Hmm. So let's reset and reset. And then... We'll just, um, you know, reset and reset again and then close team viewer. Okay. Now I have my eyes on that computer are fucking, I don't have any eyes. So I just need to like keep an eye on like the, the whatevers. Holy shit, YouTube stream is delayed as fuck at times, man. What the fuck? Why are you... S s whatever. Before the Twitch stream was dying, so, like, now I don't think it is, but uh, what was I doing before? Oh, I, I was cleaning this up. So... One of the problems that I had... the So, the, the progress that's stopping the Blender for... Or the Forge for Blender add-on. And the big progress that I finally have now. Um, God fucking damn it. It's 
is that if it will ever open, goddammit. There it is. Um, the problem was... Well, don't delete these things. I go to the other uh, open recent... Halo assets. So here's all... Where did I put this? I think I moved it. Projects, uh, projects, development, software, Blender, Forge tools. I need to or, or, I need to do some organization. So core Blender add-on. This is what I need to point to. Open and open that. So here is like the. All the Blender assets that are currently in it. Monkey heads getting deleted. So this is basically every primitive minus the whatever the fuck it's called. The the one that's like shaped like that. Or actually th 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 this one. Wh whatever that's called. And the problem, the reason why there's not every single item in here is because... To be able to import, to be able to make this the whole thing work, is that it needs to be there's an add-on, another Blender add-on that someone else made for importing the Halo render, the Halo Infinite render model. And there's also the need to set up the object ID, which honestly, once these object IDs are set up, they don't even need to be displayed. So I should probably honestly like turn that off. Trapezoid, exactly. So what needs to happen, which I solved it, is the problem is, is that right now only static items work. And the bad thing about, the, I guess the only thing about that is that Is that um you can, uh, with static items? Static items are easy because all you need to do is set the object ID here, and the variant ID is irrelevant. But if you wanted to do, if you wanted to actually make dynamic objects, this variant ID has to be set to the ID of the variant. So like if there's like a 16 by 16 by 16 variant of like the a primitive cube that's set to dynamic, it has that ID has to be set or it just fucks off. So how the fuck do you easily get all that? Well, the, the big way that we got these is we had uh, the, all the IDs for this is that Sereja gave Josh a big list of file with most of the IDs. And then he just like did some black magic regex to like get everything organized nice and neat. Which is great. But there's, you know, that's only half the battle because there's each one of these items, like this base item has like, I think five or six or 50. There's a lot of variations for the primitive. For the, sorry, the, the, for the dynamic objects, there's a lot of uh, variations on this cube. And it's like, well, how do you get all of them? And also, how do you how do we automatic uh, automate importing all this stuff? Well, inside of these files, there's these files called dot forge object data files. So this is the uh, this is the forerunner uh, forerunner primitive block A. So this is basically the when you spawn in a uh, forerunner primitive block, this is like the block. This is like the tag that keeps track of its data. So like the, there's like paths here for all like all red liquid paths for all the different um. I think these are all the different variants. So the eight by eight, eight by 16 by eight, 16 by 32 by 16 and so on. And obviously there'll be more and more here. Depend it'll be more here or less here depending on the item. But down here in somewhere in this data, you, you can, that's the date for the release of your add-on. It, it technically it's ready 
and to be used. I need to redo the release. It's a little fucked up right now. So, like, I hardly... See, my problem is I hardly ever do Blender releases. So, technically, there's, like... I think this fixed. I think I think this is the current version. I don't think I've made any changes. But it's really, like... This is, like, it's... Everything's a little scuffed right now. I gotta do some cleanup, and there's some things that are still, like, visible that don't really need to be visible that you might, like... Oh, like... Like this, uh, like, like this button, the, you know, I, that's right. This doesn't have it loaded. Um, I need to do some cleanup, but if you like, if you're like comfortable in Blender, you could probably start doing it as long as you're very careful to not like hit the wrong export button. Cause I need to oh, export for it is in here. The Forge Forge point club button is broken and it's going to be removed because I'm going to redo it. Um, and obviously there's only these items right now. Which is what I'm about to fix, and then after that, once I fix and get all the... I think I'm going to focus on the, getting the landscape first. At least make sure all the landscape items are done. But technically it's ready now. I mean, I made uh, in the last stream I did... Uh, do I have that? I was using the assets and forging with... Uh, it was this stream, right? Yeah, I was I was recreating a scent from Valorant. Oh, that's that's when I spent half an hour dicking around with rotation. Oh, yeah, ignore that part. Basically, I just imported the Valorant map from an add-on that another add-on that allows you to import Valorant maps into Blender, and then I just spawned all the cubes like I am here. Like, there's a cube on the wall, cube on the wall, cube on the wall, and then I basically just went around and started scaling that shit. Something like uh. Like, I basically, you, you kind of get the process. I'm just, like, pre-cubing uh, pre cubing up the walls that I know that need to be set. And then I'll just go around and go, uh, you know, make them fit. Like that. It works. It currently is, like, it, everything exports correctly. Um, What's his name? Oh, God. The, the, the guy that helped me with the rotation the other day. I can see his profile icon. I can't see his fucking name. Uh, he, he's been using it and got it. I think he got it working. Whatever. Um, I need to make like a proper video showing how to do it. I guess it's not that hard. All you really do to like actually use the add-on is like you, in, you add the add-on like you normally would with any Blender add-on, like adding the pie here. This is eventually... I'm going to turn it into a module eventually. It's just... Ugh. So you ins you'll install a zip instead of a .py file, but it's... Again, like I said, the organization. A few passes of love need, but are needed. But then also, the only other thing you need to do is in your library assets, add... Like, point to the folder that the Blender assets are at so that you can actually have the Blender assets pop up in the asset browser. Like this. So you can just, you know, drag and drop everything over and, you know, forge. The, the, actually, without this add-on on the left, without, not the add-on, without this um, feature from Blender 3.0, if they didn't add this and they were like decided to, like, wait, like, a year or two, this would be, this, this whole process would have been a pain in the ass. Like, it would not have been fun. And I also plan on adding potentially some hotkeys, because, like, when you're working on a map, I, I was going to do some research on figuring out how to add, bind this, because right now, the, as you've seen probably when I was working before in the video, I was basically clicking and dragging like this to spawn things in. And that's not great. Ideally, I would like it to be, like, let's say this was, like, a wall, I put my mouse over it, press a button and click, and it will spawn the, you know, whatever button I, you know, whatever hotkey I pressed, where my cursor's at. Or I guess it could also be where your, um, where your uh, 3D cursor's at. I need to figure out how to spawn these things in, which it sh I guess it shouldn't be that hard because I could just literally come. Let me, uh, let me unlink that.
it should be as simple as dragging I'm in edit mode, oops. Dragging that and then checking the scripting tab and seeing object add name session UUID two three two. Is is that the is that always the same? UUID three two uh, two th I assume this is like rotation and then this is the position. I don't know what this number means. I don't, it doesn't matter. Oh, am I, multiply, am I multiplying by 10 over here? Maybe that's why it's fucked. Oh, I am. What if we go back to one? Do these numbers make sense? 282. Yes, that is the position. That's also something that's not required, but m helps you, like, it makes something, it, ma it makes it easier to, like, convert from, like, Halo to whatever, is your units need to be set to metric, and your unit scale needs to be a 10x, you need to multiply everything by 10 with the unit scale here. And that makes the numbers here on the right, and, the, like, the transform and stuff line up perfectly. <laughs> It doesn't actually mean anything on the export. It doesn't actually fuck with anything, I don't think. I haven't had it fuck anything up yet. Because setting this to 1 and exporting, setting it to 10 and exporting doesn't do much. It just changes the scale here. And, like, the dimensions, like, if you, like, change this to 1, you see it's a... It actually really shows here on the cube. So it's, like, 0.4 meters. Like, this cube I know is a 4 by 4 by 4 unit cube. But it's 0.4 meters. That doesn't make sense. But you times it by 10, it comes up to be 4. And Blah, 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 blah. But I have solved one problem. I guess a long side tangent on how I solved the other problem. So this is a stupid hex editor file, and there's these files in Forge, these UCSH files. Something, something, something header. I forget the name of them. And thankfully, thankfully, holy shit. Actually, that is, actually let's make sure it's still running. And then I'll close the tab. I thought it crashed. Okay, it took so long to load there. I thought it crashed. Um, these files here. Somebody, thankfully, some other project, uh, which I don't have the tab, but well, here they are. Already, like, kind of, like, figured out the, like, the tag structure. Thankfully. And already had, um... Basically, this is like the the layout. This whole like this, all the stuff we're looking at is basically the layout of this file. So like all what all this data means is it's just. So think of it as like there's an integer here and then there's an integer here, and each one of these types have like a known size. So like an integer, a 32-bit int is four bytes, while you know while a an integer that is 64 bits is eight bytes. So like the first eight bytes here, so four bytes for this magic, and the four bytes here for the version. If you were to hover over the first four bytes, so one, two, three, four, you're gonna notice the first four bytes are the are the are the uh, ASCII equivalent of U C S H, and then the next four the next four bytes, one, two, three, four, comes out to be a number twenty seven. So that's basically the version. So this is like the 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 type of the file it is, and then the version of it, and then basically you just follow this process all the way down for all the rest of it, and all the different other uh, little types and shit. And then you get the whole file. Except that the whole file isn't... We, we, we did, all the data that I need isn't actually in there. There's still... Um, the, the thing that I discovered, uh, hor I discovered after I finally figured out why my shit's being fucked. Basically, the, 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 like, the two-head take is... Data in file, 343 doesn't publicly tell us how the file's structured. So people figured it out. Thankfully, not me in this case, but I'm going to have to figure something else out. You know, like, just looking at this, it's like, who the fuck can understand this? Except, hey, like, there's some, like, there's some, like, more text here when you look at a hex editor. Like, these are 
clearly these are like some kind of file paths, like level assets, Shiva Forge. You know, going off of ex experience, I know this is like the file, a relative file path to the um to whatever block it's looking for. Probably this is like the basic block. But what's in this down at the bottom? And I discovered this. If we search all, so this is this is one of the variant IDs. I have it open probably over here or somewhere. It's all the variant IDs are probably somewhere. So down here near the bottom of the file exists all the object variant IDs and also the object ID. And also it has the object ID and all the variants, which is big because you know, how the fuck do I get all the object IDs? You know, like what what do I I need to manually import everything to Blender and set the I, set this ID because there is no easy way to get all the IDs of all the blocks and all the variant IDs and stuff. Like Josh and Seraja came in big with um I'll bring this up. Uh I'll just go here and click Josh's name. It's normally what I do. Why is it doing that? Um, so he already, like, Sereja gave Josh this big long list of, like, uh, object IDs. I don't think it was literally every Forge object. We, pr I think we missed a few. I might have been, I think there was a, some that was not there. But there is, inside of this, here's, like, every object ID. So big long list, like, concrete underscore bear underscore short underscore MP with the ID of this. So you, you can kind of get the idea. There's... A fucking lot. So there's here we have 2,500 lines, so we have roughly 2,500 items in Forge, and I know that's not true. We're like there's I think there's 2,650 or something, or closer to 27. So we're missing a few. We're missing like 100 or so. But what this doesn't have is if you've you know forged in any game before, you know there's like variants that each object can have. Like each object isn't just its normal thing. Normally there's like some variations you can have, like as an example, in Infinite, if you wanted to make an object uh, have physics enabled, wanted to be if you wanted it to be a dynamic object, so you wanted to disable scaling but have physics, that's a separate ID that is clearly not stored here. Like, what if I want to know the, the, the variant ID of this thing? It's like, well, I don't fucking know. Like, you know, like, what's the... Basically, this number doesn't work. You have to find the other number and then think about it, how the fuck do you find it for 20, almost 2,700 items. And that's what I was trying to do here. And thankfully, some other, um, some other people came around eventually. This was like a few years ago, actually, like a year or two or like a year ago. And they, uh, the Blam Creation Suite, never heard of it before. I found, I got lucky and found, uh, the, I basically got lucky and I searched on GitHub, the UCSH like this text here, and then I found this. Because they were decent enough to have it in their, like, the header file had a comment of the, like, of, of this text, and it popped up in the GitHub search, and I got so, so fucking happy, because trying to figure this stuff out on your own, it's possible to, like, reverse this without any other information. Since we have, like, a bunch of different of these files, you could have just compared the two and seen the differences and why not, and, like, done this long-ass, tedious process of figuring out what everything meant. Thankfully, I didn't have to do that. Most of the time, you rarely have to do that, unless, like, you're doing some, like, obscure shit. But the data that I need is actually at the bottom of this file. So what I need to do now is I need to... I, I can only get so lucky. I can only get so lucky. The data, the little, the block of data down here at the bottom, which is like roughly like this. If I open it up over here and I run this. So this is basically what we just done. It's a little weird to look at. We just read that file, the file that we're looking at here. We, we read it, but in C sharp. So we have like the header and you can see here the the magic being one whatever. And then you can see the version that I mentioned before is 27. So we've read this file, but the problem is, is that the data we want 
is actually in this big long is basically in this like tag underscore data variable here this big this big like byte array is basically a big long list of bytes and the data we actually want is down here and from what i can tell this hasn't been like no one's converted this like no one no one's like done the the work to be like hey what does all of this mean i have i've tried looking a little bit and i haven't found anything so this data is just like who the fuck knows but because how computers work and how everything is most things are a multiple of two it shouldn't be that hard to figure out because like i said before uh where's my other tab at like i said before there is so this is like the header file like i said with the the magic and the version you know the size of an integer the size of a 32-bit integer is four bytes and then the size of a 64-bit integer is eight bytes and then also you can basically follow the math of all you basically just do the math of all of it like you know there also there are bytes like you can have like a byte you know a char is one byte so you know it, it shouldn't be that difficult to kind of figure out hey like the first four bytes the, you know the like you, you look at this as b b b b b like all this data is the same and that's one two three five six seven eight nine ten eleven the window there's more b's up here 11 12 13 14 15 16. that's convenient that's 16 bytes that's two that's that's like two longs maybe maybe the this thing opens up with two longs or so on and so forth you know yeah it's it really really is i re it actually makes making maps for uh, making maps for uh, halo fun because i'm not again i'm not much of like a, a level designer or like an artist i like i like more of like this bullshit and it makes it actually like speedy to do like i mean i the, the those whole the last streams of odd if you go look at it i mean i i did dick around and wasn't like super efficient because i'm still kind of getting used to the workflow of how to handle things and i within i probably put two hours uh because i had uh i didn't start the whole map on this stream because the previous youtube video i did i started like the b site of this so like maybe like 10 or 20 percent of the map was already done but then i finished the rest of the map in like less than six hours and I can tell you that it is super easy to get really accurate recreations. Actually, I'll, I'll show the part that I really like. If I skip forward, I start doing the stairs here. And this is something that I really love. I need to figure that out as well, that, that problem. I got to remember to fix that. I'm not going to explain it, but it's it's a way that the Blender handles shit. I, can, I should be able to fix it with an add-on. But like trying to create a stair here, it's like, you know, this is kind of like annoying because it's like, I don't want to create a fucking stair. Why am I just dicking? I'm just sitting around. So I spawn the cube and then I select the things. Like I select the cube that I just spawned, the staircase, and then the other thing, the other like floor that I spawned. Um, and basically I, you know, I just kind of eyeball rotate it. There, there is a, there probably is a cleaner way to get the rotation correctly, but I just kind of eyeball it and then snap it. And it's like, that's good enough. Well, I, you know, like it comes out to be good enough. And then, you know, you basically take it, you scale it, and you snap it, and then you do the same thing, and that's a staircase, and so on, and you basically do the, you do the same song and dance bullshit, and you do the Blender stuff, and you just, like, be better at Blender, and I mean, it's literally over here floundering with Blender's rotation stuff, just because, like, this is 2x speed, by the way, so, like, everything you just witnessed was, like, two times faster, so I'm truly floundering like a fucking, like, a fish. Oh, fucking flopping around with a little water. So like people that are better at Blender and know the hotkeys without having to think about them will be able to do this kind of shit way faster. But yeah, it's it, the time saving is going to be great and oh my god, I can't. Uh, could you create pre, uh, prefabs and import a Halo assets to use in Blender make sort of... Could you create prefabs out of the imported Halo assets to use in Blender if you... Okay, so that is something, so I'm going to work on that. I assume what you're saying is you want to, let's say like, 
Well, and I guess necessarily you don't even have to, it doesn't even have to be a prefab because what really is a prefab? So we have a, so you're basically asking me like to recreate stuff because what you could do, there's nothing stopping you. So let's say, so uh, here, this might answer your question, but I'll get into the actual real question of the prefab because there's more to this than what I'm explaining. This is like the current workaround that I would do right now um, because I don't have the thing that you're ask, actually asking for uh, working yet. Um, unless I'm misunderstanding. So how I'm how like you actually drag the stuff in? Um, Blender in Blender 3.0 has this fancy Blender asset browser. Now, if you've ever used a 3D program other than Blender, all the fucking Maya and 3DS Mac, uh, 3DX browsers are going to be like, what the fuck? You don't have an asset? Blender hasn't had an asset browser for like 20 years? No. But we finally got one like a year and a half ago or something, like with Blender 3. And basically, it's like, think of it like, you know, it's a, it's a collection of all your materials and stuff, or, or all of your uh, textures, or all of your assets, basically all your assets that you want to like use in your scene in place, like... You know, like this makes it really easy. And before, if you wanted to do this, you would have to like import them and like duplicate them around and shit. It was really shitty. So what you could do is you could come in to a separate Blender scene like this. So this is what this is a separate Blender scene that is its entire purpose is to work as an asset library. Because I'm not going to do stuff in here other than store this stuff. But I won't open up another scene. Just you know, I'll keep I'll stay in the scene just for the example. So let's say you want to make like a a pre a, a quote unquote shitty prefab. Eventually, I plan on making real prefabs. So like here we go. We we made a little cone here. That snap was perfect. Holy shit! Let's say like this was uh this was our prefab. We got like a weird like it's like a bomb or something. So what you could do is can't uh, so you could. I don't actually know if this is supported. I, I'll, I'll find out. We'll test it right now. Put it all in a new collection and mark that collection as a... Mark as asset? Okay, so it does work the way I think it does. So what we've done here is that since we made this prefab, you know, big air quotes in this prefab, out of objects that are already like valid Halo objects, so like... Each one of these already have the ID and set up. And then we group, we basically put them all in a collection. We group them into a collection and then mark this collection as an asset. If I was to open up, let's say in another map. So let's pretend I am in another map right now and I load it up. I could just drag and drop. Oh, you're such a piece of shit. Why didn't you work? You know that you're such a piece of shit. Why even show that if it's not going to fucking work? Like, what's wrong with you, game? Or Blender? Does everything inside of it also need to be marked as a fucking asset? Like, I swear to God. Whoa, that's a bug. No, that is that is not intended. That's not intended. That it, it's supposed. It, that's not supposed to be how that works. That's clearly not. Ugh. Is there another way to group stuff other than a collection? Like, why is it? Hold on. You should. What should have happened when I dragged this over? It should have created this. But like, I'll look into that. But basically, yes. But the real answer is, is like, if you wanted to like re make a prefab from the actual game, let's say you had a pre, let's say you wanted to take a prefab from the real game that you had on like say your file share and then use it inside of Blender. I plan, because the problem right now is, this is only a one way thing. So like we can only go from Blender to Halo, not from Halo to Blender, which is Trust me, I hate that because the instant because right now I don't have textures working in the Blender tool. I do plan on getting textures working. The progress I've made over here is going to help to that. But the the issue is is that there's a lot of texture files and there's a lot of stuff to deal with, and I got to automate that. Uh, that's that's why that's not already working. But I do plan on going, being able to load back and forth between the two. It's just a complicated issue. 
because how we're loading it, how we're loading the data, I guess I don't need to explain it. So, like, you know, like, how videos, when you, um, I guess, I don't know, if, I'm trying to think of a better way to, I'm trying to think of a less technical term to describe it, but, like, with video, there's, like, lossless video, and then there's lossy video. You've probably heard of lossless audio or lossless video. Basically means that, like, from when it was recorded and when you're consuming it, it's a one-to-one -one copy, and normally lossless audio is really large. It's, like, potentially up to 30 megabytes a song or more. If you've ever downloaded FLAC before, um, you 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 know how big they can uh, how big audio can get. Um, and what happens is because of the way the, the way the data is stored in the way, and, and because we don't know, the, basically the way that because of the way that I'm reading and writing to the map, there's some like, if not done correctly. It's going to be a lot. You're going to lose data when you import to Blender and export back out. An example of this would be, let's say, you know, I make a little shitty map. Well, let's say, pretend I'm in Halo. Let's say I make a map in Halo that is this. I make this. Here, here's my Halo map. And let's say, let's import this into Blender. But let's actually say, like, let's say I'm going to set the material of this to green. Let's say the cube's green. But let's say Blender doesn't actually support the Blender add-on, which it currently doesn't, doesn't support the ability to read the material data, and neither does the converting tool that I'm using on the side to convert it to the map. None of it supports materials. So when you import it to Blender, Blender is just going to assign it its own generic fucking colors and stuff. Kind of a shitty example. but So when you export this back out into Halo, um, so we, over here back in Halo land, the colors are not going to match. Because we didn't, I didn't, the the program wasn't aware of that data, so there's basically some like, basically I have to I have to like make the converter in a way that preserves data, and I haven't found a great solution to that yet. Because, like you, it, it's com it's complicated, and I don't even think I fully understand the issue yet. Because. Uh, It's a complicated issue, is all I have to say. I basically need a way to store the unserialized data of an object so that it can like stay with it the entire process. Or the alternative is, is to just have all the data exist in the object. Like just have everything. Now, I've, there's a few solutions, like when I, in the tool going from Blender or whatever, I guess I could add like, I, maybe if I was to really lean on the, I can close that. I, I need, this is something, once I've, this is a problem that I'm going to really think about after I get all the assets in, because, or at least most of the important assets in. Because it's a very complicated issue. That I don't know how to solve, and I'm probably going to have to write it like six times before I find a, a, an approach that makes sense. I thought I was going to get lucky in that the bond format, that the map bond is basically the, the dot .invar, like the, the map file. Is, they're, th basically, with how the map file, the, the format the map file saved in, I thought I was going to get bailed out, and it was going to work, but no, I have to I basically have to do everything fucking manually. Classic. Why is it doing that? It's a pain in the ass. The whole thing's a pain in the ass. But what we what we are doing now is I'm gonna figure out. I'm gonna close this before I fuck anything up in it. So what we're gonna do now? Oh, that can get close as well. Probably not gonna open Halo for a little bit. Is I'm gonna. So we have all the. So I've already grabbed all the object IDs that we need. I need to see if there's a way to highlight stuff in HXD. HXD. Simple bookmarking slash highlighting. Uh, 
I need I need a way of highlighting specific blocks. Control shift number. Oh, no, I want to highlight the specific bytes. Fuck. Okay, so what we need to do, the process, I'll, I'll try to, I'll try to like make this interesting. It's a sleeper as fuck. So what I need to do is get the, well, I, I'm going to, I'm going to make an assumption and I'm going to, I'm going to try to, hopefully that's, this is true. So in this data down here, uh, in the way, so like if you come up here and actually we look at this list, this big long string of bullshit, we're looking at the data on the right here. It's kind of hard to read because it's like stacked in together, but basically this is like a relative path. So levels, assets, Shiva, forge, and that path, if I come over here and I go to Z, Halo 1 pack, chore, gen, levels, assets, Shiva. So you see it says levels, assets, Shiva. And then forge for primitives. And then it says for forge prim block A, prim block A. So basically the relative path here. It's pointing to here, I think. It's pointing to this file here. Or this folder here, which actually holds the render model. This is actually what we need to like render the damn thing. So that's important. And because this is the for this is the because the file na the folder name is full uh full forward for, uh, prim block A. It's like the base version of this because it's not 8 by 8 by 8 or 16 or whatever. It's like the base block. So I assume this would be it would be um That's basically that's like the base block and it's listed first. So I'm gonna hope that down here in the list where all the ID where the object IDs are, the first object ID down here listed is actually the same thing as the object ID that we have that we already know that Josh already added to the big long list of object IDs over here. And if that's the case, then this is going to be a very easy process of getting all the bullshit. But first, actually, what we're going to do is we're going to collect all these files. I guess that's something we'll do first. Because it's fun and it's easy and I can do it in like two seconds. So we're going to get all the files and then um, we need to uh, C sharp. What's the, uh, is it file like copy? This is be very, okay. This is kind of scary. I'm just going to hack it together and pray to God I don't accidentally copy my whole fucking computer. So we go, so we go four, I guess we can do, uh, we'll do four each. For each file in files, we go file.copy. So we're going to copy. Basically, what we're doing is we're searching the directory, my Halo unpack directory for the .forge object data. We're searching every single directory, and then we're going to copy that to a new folder that I'm going to create right now. Oh, I remember what I was going to do now. Um terminal is it robo uh, it's okay it is that okay so i need to go i need to copy it first uh and because copying things are robo copy here to here slash um What? What did it fail? Forge for button hit. What? 
What did it break? What did I specifically? Halo Infinite Data. So, okay. Uh, hold on. Robo copy. What's the speed? Uh, th th basically, this is like a, a copying tool that's a robust file copy. It's it's fa it's a basically a really fast way of co uh, copying files because the normal Windows file manager is really dog shit. Slash MIR. Including the empty. There we go. So if we look at this now, uh, the read speed and the write speed of the drive is actually like up there in like speed. If you were to do this in the file, uh, if you're a normal file browser and try to copy a large amount of things, uh, it can be incredibly fucking slow. I just tried to do it. It's got to basically like with the Windows File Explorer, or whatever, it's got to like search for every single fucking file before it starts copying or some shit. And uh, the robust file copy just kind of just sends it and just like starts copying and shit. So like I guess right now it's a little slow. I don't know why it's so slow. Let's make sure that I'm not breaking this. Um, I don't think it's working. Uh. I'm brain damaged. I might have brain damage. I might have brain damage. I might have brain damage. Wait, no, can I, um, hold on. Oh. Can't you change the amount of threads? Slash MT30. Okay, that might help. Slash MT colon 32. Go. There, look at that. Okay, there, we actually hit gigabit, uh, gigabyte, gigabyte, uh, gigabyte speeds. That's not gigabit speeds. So now the numbers are at least higher, I think. They should be. I don't forget what they were before. So you can see now in Halo data, we're copying stuff from the Halo unpack. And obviously the CPU usage is going through the fucking ceiling. <laughs> Shit. We're copying all over the, all. we don't need all this data. I'm just copying it all over. Cause I want, I'm trying to organize. This is for organization, but This is why you buy an NVMe drive so that you have a really fast disk so that you can copy things very quickly. Well, assuming you have the CPU to back it because we're at 74% usage on a 5900X. So it's like fucking spurging out. I guess the I guess another thing is the Twitch stream. If it's is I gotta make sure everything's still open. Honestly, I'm I gotta make sure everything's not fucking broken because like I'm I'm trying to make sure that the sh we're not gonna have technical issues. Okay, we're good. And make sure the Twitch is Twitch stream is still working correctly. I 
I mean, it's going to take a bit to copy because it's like 80 fucking gigs or something. Okay, good. We're good. Because I I, it, cr it crashed a couple times and I'm like scared. I assume the reason the write speed gets so slow is because it like it it basically comes across like a patch of like or the writes and reads it comes across a patch of uh like really small files and then like when it like, actually you can kind of tell the difference because when it speeds up with the faster it scrolls the lower the maybe not wow that was that was gigabit that was gigabyte writes and reads there for a second go disk go speed Now, I don't know how long this is going to take. It should almost be done. I think. This is, this is why I put th this is stuff on the, this is on a separate drive. Because uh, it would take, this would take forever if it was on like a normal SSD. Well, at least not be forever. Take a lot longer. Well, maybe not. Some of the the reads and writes are quite low at times. Interesting. There's. It's already reading out. It's already reading like eighty something gigs here. Maybe it is almost done, which is why it's uh, very slow right now. Or do you think it's done? Ooh, it could be done. It's just the command prompt isn't done catching up yet. Maybe that's it. Because right now the disk activity is zero. This is just the command prompt being slow. So that's 79 gigs, 79.1 compared to, I'll just let it, I'll just let directory help us calculate it. 79.1. So there we go. We've copied it. Now I'm going to leave the Halo, uh, oh fuck. I fucked up. This was supposed to be one file deeper. Um... Fuck me. Fuck me. Fuck me. Fuck me. It was supposed to be in a folder in a folder. Okay, there's maybe hope. Maybe hope. Please be instant. Thank God. Okay. Because before when I tried to do just what I just did there, it wanted to like, it was doing some dumb shit. Okay, so we're going to go. Now, what we were doing before, before we got sidetracked on this bullshit. File copy. And uh, it's source file into destination file name. Well, there's got to be an easier way because this is destination file name. There's got to be a. I guess that's an approach. Yeah, I, I like. Okay, so we go file. We go file, and then we go. So we have the, we have the destination var dash is equal to 
after we replace these. So we're going to copy that file to the destination destination. Copy the destination to, no, it doesn't matter. File dot dest plus file dot it's path name path dot name get file name file so uh, we're copying stuff from the, we're shopping the f stuff from this all the all, we're copying all the forge object data from there to there that should this should work I'm gonna run it what do you mean oh it's highlighted oh yep probably semicolons Good idea for semicolons. Could not find part pa path halo. Oh, that's right. Because I need to change the name to halo. I'm trying my best as well to no longer put um to put spaces in my directory names. So what we should do is now when we run this, let me save this. It's going to take a second to get all those files. But there should be 2699. I feel like we're short one or two. No, we might not be. That sounds about right, actually. So now we should be able to just like run it. Okay, that's fair. It could already exist. That's a fair point. That's a fair point. I didn't think about it already existing. Oh shit. Oops. I um oops. Uh what did I do wrong here? I delete all those. We need to go it needs to be to here. The destination needs to be there. And then we go. If dot exists, so if the file exists at path destination plus path dot get file name file. If it exists, I guess if it does not exist. If it does not exist, copy. What? Oh. It's definitely writing. So now we have a forge object data folder with all the forge object data items, which there is 2698. Now what is, how does that compare to the rough count that we have over here in Josh land? I swear to God, man, these bots hide user from this channel. More, definitely more. 2698 sounds about right. So now we have all the Forge objects data, all the Forge updates in one folder. So now this will be easy to loop over. 
So now we go back to what we were doing before and unpause that. So what we need to do Okay. What I need to do is we need to figure out how this is laid out. So what we need to do now, go over here, go, uh, I need to find which, which cube it is. I don't know which cube I need or block. Not the concrete blocks, the four on this ID is what we need. So when I control F search this bitch, we're going to find that the ID does exist at the very, very top, but it's not the first time it exists. So what I need to do is I need to figure out where exactly The tag data starts, so when we run this and it dumps, this number here is the start of the tag data. 680. Let's select a block. With decimal starting at six, or at two, two, nine, eight, two, two, nine, eight, for the length of, let's just select the first four bytes. Whoa, what? So the extra data So the first number here is the extra data. Is that the start of what we need? So select block, decimal, starting here, first four bytes, go. No, just only select the first four bytes. First four. So this ID exists one, two, there's four instances of that ID just right there. Four occurrences. One, two, three, four, five, wait. It's repeating it five times. Okay, let's dump the let's figure out what what when the zone set data what is um what is its address start at 13 here let's so let's go find the select block where the fuck start off set here four bytes so that's immediately after Zone set data size is 280. Select block here and offset. No, wait, is a length of 280. 280. All right, so it's in the zone set data. Inside the zone set data exists, uh, I don't know. So we
shit. Oh, uh, isn't there a hex editor view? It is, okay. Really, there's no... Okay, hold on, where is this file located? Documents. Okay. Fuck. So I need to go and we need to figure this out. Wait, what export sheet? What the fuck does that even do? What is, what happens if you can export C sharp in this bitch? Like what even happens? What does it output? Oh, it just gives you the raw data in C sharp. That's cute. Uh, oh, sorry. I, I am actually an idiot. The why no spaces. <laughs> Uh, I, I just realized, I thought that was, I read, for some reason I thought it was the same message from, I'm fucking idiot, but the reason no space is, even though it's an old as fuck message, because I'm fucking brain dead, is that with spaces, you have to, you have to put quotes around file paths and windows for spaces, so if there was a space between halo.data without quote, uh, quotes like this, this, pa this path here and this path here are not the same. And it's just annoying to have to put quotes on everything. It's cute that the thing puts all I'll puts all that, but uh, so I need to I need to go back and uh, copy this. Fuck, wrong window, man. So to select the block again, the select starting the block here with the length of what was the length? It was the two eighty. 280? That's the data I care about. So this is the block of data that we care about. So specifically, what is the, where's the integer that we care about? Go backwards. Two, one, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight. There's eight instances of it, damn it. I don't know. I don't know what this is. So we're gonna have to do some experimenting here. I need to open another, I need another file. Something that I know, um, super prime block A. There we go. Okay, so we need to read that and I need to get its um So the it's Ooh, is that much is that really that much longer larger? It is. Okay. So I need to get its zone set its first number being 4000 bytes. So let's go ahead and open that in a hex editor. Select block, the in decimal starting here. The zone set size, uh, 792. 792. Copy to a new file and paste. So now we have the two files. We have two files to work with here. So it looks like I'm going to assume all the data down here. So if I was to go grab the uh, ID, GitHub, we go grab the ID of the primitive, the default primitive item, please. Um, but why is that not, um, why am I not in streamer mode? Monka. So we, oh, God damn it. We got to grab the, ID. no, not the cheat sheet. Don't be, don't be trolling now. Game object, game object. No, 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 no. This is object ID. Cube. It's a block. So that is the primitive block. So now we search here and find out where the first instance of that is.
Okay, it's it literally leads the block, the big block of bullshit at the bottom. So, um, we need to figure out how do how do we determine the length of this? Because there's clearly a lot of data in here. I save me from user defined functions. Uh. Yeah, I am in my own little bubble of hell right now. Specifically, this part, the data we're looking at here between these two files, this hasn't actually been like, there's no like reader for this shit. No one's done it from what I can tell, and I'm in way over my head. Nobody knows what the, f no, no, maybe there's a way to grab all this stuff, but I don't know how to. Hold on, where's my, I can just click it from here. I need to get to the header file, please. This time tomorrow, we will be forging. Well, doing node graph stuff, I guess. The power of two to align the tag data buffer to. I don't know what the fuck that means. The offset of the... Birthday party to go to, nice. Index. Yeah, my fucking, my youngest brother, it's like, it's, it's weird. Cause you know, you always see them like they're literally this kid for like the longest time. And then it's like, now they're like literally like driving. It's just like, bro, what the fuck? Like fucking weird. The offset of the tag field inside the data block. Okay, I think the data is here. I think the stuff that I need is here. I assume one of these fields up here, one of these like tag reference bullshits is referring to the stuff down here. So there's a rough count of at least one, two, three, four. So let's get a rough count going off of these nine Bs here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. There's either 13 or close to 13. <laughs> Uh, things in here. And my guess is that, my guess is that, where's my tab? Where's my tab? Tag data block, the th uh, 13. So I assume, the, how many tag data blocks are there? Fourteen. There's fourteen. Holy shit, that's close. Tag block instances, fourteen? That's not a coincidence, right? Owner block four, six. How big, what was the offset? How big of a selection...
was there anything else here? Um, tag, no tag data instances. There's the tag data. Six nuggets. I feel like that's Spotify is bugging out. So when I assume tag block instances, that's gotta be my, that's gotta be what I want because there's the tag data and there's the tag blocks. So my guess is that inside the tag data, there's blocks and there's 14 blocks in the tag data, which is an array, the, the array of a hundred and wait, no, 153 bytes. Block. So what? So from this, forty-eight. We expect something to be eighty. So forty-eight then goes to eighty. Five six. No. The offset is four. The owner block offset is four six. Uh, four hundred and six uh, seventy-six. Which is larger than the tag. No, maybe it's, re maybe it's referring to the zone set data then? Well, because the zone set data is what I care about. Okay, well, the, the the way to confirm this is that this this block, this has got like a, a lot. So what if I go and comment this and bring this back in? We bring this other one in and then we run it. And then that the tag data, the instances should be like a fee, a couple. It shouldn't be a lot. Tag data instances. So tag, sorry, tag block instances is even more. Okay, so clearly that's not the data I want. Because, I mean, even if I'm counting, okay, okay, okay. Maybe I'll get lucky on another Google search, even though I've or another search here. All of GitHub, maybe I'll get lucky. Okay, um, this is some Halo 5 stuff, maybe it will help. Hold on, this might be important.
This is This is um That gives that gives me some makes me want to like look more at uh Have one of the contributors to that other thing. Could have swore. I remember. Fuck, I'm trying to find anything. I mean, this, the older game stuff could help me. See, this is the same, this is the same file I was looking at before. Hello, Darth. It's going, uh, I'm trying my best to avoid having to do hard work right now. By searching to see if someone else has solved my problem. Uh... It does not look like anyone has. Um, so I don't actually, um, I don't actually, um, think I'm gonna have to like work for this, for this one. Hey, Zimod, we're looking. Bro, it's going to be great. We're d I'm making no, I'm creating, uh, uh, viewer suggested no graph stuff all day. And it's all going in my file share. So if anybody has, uh, if anybody has anything that they want made or want to learn about something, if someone, if, any people that are new to the node graph or just programming in general want to learn more about it tomorrow is the day all day starting when it comes out i'm going to probably stream all day and maybe every day the rest of the week You know, he, his tool might actually help. Do uh, yes, uh, I've it's actually already kind of ready. Uh, I have a few videos. Uh, the last stream I was using it. It's I'm working I'm right now. I'm trying to like push it a bit further. I'm trying to like do more. I'm trying to like, I'm trying to get over this hump I'm on right now. Cause it's like, I, we're, we have like a problem that I, I can't really solve, but the last stream, 
I, I used it the entire stream. This entire stream was basically me making a map with it. If it ever decides to load. And then I eventually, like... Like, here's, like, the block out. No, it didn't show it. I mean, I mean the block out... I basically mapped over a Valorant map and then imported it into Blender and here it is or whatever. It's the last the last stream uh kind of showed it off. So fuck man. Did that not open? It did open. Okay, what happens if I open up this? No tag open documents down to forge or forward primitive block copy see it gives us some data that we care about internal struct scale limits settings region one region two three overlay Yeah, it's right now it is right now the add-on only works in one direction. So you can only go from Blender to Halo and it's like main po our point is like blo I've been using it to like block maps out. It's like there's still there's a lot to still a lot to be done with it. Mainly getting all the items into it, which is what I'm working on now. I mean, he's got all the scale sizes and stuff here, which is cool that that's all like. Like, all these. This information is here. Object represent. Yeah, the primitives and stuff are already working. Well, all the primitives except for the, uh, the one thing. Uh, the. The trapezoid. All the primitives minus the trapezoid because for the life of me could not get that fucking item to import. I'll try again when the actual build comes out. Right now I'm trying to get every item in it because I've, I've got all... This, this folder here is full of every single, at least I think, there's... There is 20... There only 55 files? No, no that's because we're searching. Uh, inside of here, there are 20... I'll, 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 I'll click it here. There are 26... Uh, 2,698 files in this folder here. And this is basically every single spawnable forge item with some extras that I think are not in the menu. And right now I'm trying to do is read these files, which they're not easily to re not easy to read, and uh, get the object IDs and the variant IDs and all the different, all the other data that I need to automate adding everything in the Blender. It's been a bitch because nothing about this is easy. Because it's like, no one's done this shit. I mean, Zmod's kind of done something like this over here with, uh... Like, he, he has a tool that oh, it almost does what I needed to do. But I don't think he's got the specific part of the file that I care about. I don't see anything that I would think would be a part of it. Wait, no, the global tag ID. Hold on. Is that the same ID as... Oh, come on. No, I have it. In... That's right. I have it over here. Which one did I open in that? So he does read it. So he's able to at least read that part of it. So uh, let's go open Discord and go to that link again. Maybe he's got part. Of, maybe he's got part of my uh, problem solved. Part of my problem is solved. Yeah, I mean, there's some like I, like there's some other people that have um that has been doing this. So like Zmod's done some stuff and there's some like 
other tools that like Serasian Z have made that have helped. And there's another project. There's another thing that thankfully the this Blam Creation Suite already had um already had like the main structure of these files like here. Like this is the whole like the whole structure of the file. So I had this to go by, but the specific specifically the part of the data that I care about isn't at least from Blam. So I have to like look elsewhere to see if I can find if anyone else has done it. It's kind of a bitch. I'm trying to see if this is all this XML bullshit. I assume this is all automated like fuck. What was, let's see if I can find this, the... Either, uh, yeah, the fucking, the only thing is, is, uh... The, me and Josh have struggled, uh, battled with this a little bit until he figured it out. The only issue, pulling it from, like, the older game... Uh, do you already, uh, launch? Yes, I have the primitive version, I think this is... If if you have issues, yell at me. It is probably broken, but this um this link that um should work. I assume you've used Blender at least a little bit, so you could probably figure it out. We're using we you use the um like a, a a library the the new like blender 3.0 like asset libraries to spawn things and then you just install the add-on normally um so as long as you like go by like you know by by the don't ever e enter edit mode for anything other than like you know don't ever manipulate the objects in edit mode and only scale rotate and position things you should be good even if it, even if the add-on, well, actually, as long as the add-on loads, even if the, even if you can't get it to export, yell at me, which it should. I, I haven't. I'm pretty sure this is the same version that I ran for the last stream. I forget if I did any changes. I need to like do like a proper like guide to showing like the setup and stuff. I kind of tried to, and then like didn't do anything with it. Okay. Yeah, so it, you need to be Blender 3 because uh, the Blender Asset Browser. So with Blender 3, there's this, they added this Asset Browser. Blender 3 or newer. Uh, basically, I, I guess I'll open up Blender real quick and show it. So it basically allows you to, um, inside of the preferences, like after you install the add-on, in the file paths down here, you're able to set like an a li asset library. Um, and you're able basically what it allows you to do is open up another window and go to the asset browser and if you choose the asset browser that you pointed to you basically have all the forge items here so you can go like boop and boop um, why are these small Oh no, they're not small. They're normal sized. It's my scaling that is small. Metric 10. There we go. Now everything feels normal. And then basically you just like forge like this. So like uh the 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 scale cage tool is a must use. Cause then you can like you know like and also the snapping tools uh allows you to like Come on, turn vertex snapping on. You're allowed to. You're allowed to vertex snap. Hello, why aren't you? Oh, it's not on scale. That's right. You know, you can like do shit like this and like easily like snap fucking everything. I fucking love. I love it. And then it also allows you to like easily like. Actually, I don't have center snap on. Face, 
edge center. I think if I move it up and then down, I think I need to snap center for it to do that and then scale back to closest. And then there we go. There's still some things I need to figure out like work workflow wise, but as long as you don't ever go into edit mode and manipulate like geometry like this, you'll be fine. And never apply scale. Do not apply scale. Okay, basically don't do anything that you would like instinctively would do in Blender. Uh, applying scale is bad. Or position or rotation, never apply anything. Shit, I need to make a video. Because the, because like if you were to come here and like you were to apply scale, so like I'm actually, the scale here that's being read, like this is important. So if you were to come over here and like apply scale, it all goes to one, which means the game is going to interpret it as being the normal size like this instead of like this. I also need to redo like the converter, the converter tool. It's there's the, the converting, the converting tool, the, the side tool that actually converts it in the MVAR. I was going to make, I've thought about making everything a blender add on, like putting everything and just it being its own little bubble but I fucking hate Python so fucking much. And I really do not, really, really, really do not want to rewrite all this in Python. I'm going to keep just the Blender stuff. Um, and um, what's it called? The, the Blender stuff can be Python and everything else can be C Sharp. I'm trying to see if I can like see a pattern here. So the pattern, I guess the pattern is, is the last, I could always come at it backwards. I'm pretty sure always at the end of this section of data is the, the, the stuff I care about. So that I could just be like a dumbass about it and go, I'm pretty sure the, this one, two, three, four. Pretty sure that is. Is that the right ID? And I go to three or four and then end with five, three. So yes. Do you have the hexagon primitives? No, not yet. So like everything that I currently have imported is this. And the only, the reason I only have so few, uh, the reason I have so few is because it's, you have to manually, to get this to all import, you have to manually import the render model and then get it in and then clean up the render model and then set the object ID, which is, I'm, I'm, that's what I'm actually working at automating, importing everything. There being like 2,600 items in Forge, uh, it's just adding these took me like, like fucking 20 minutes or something. Or like 15, it, it took me like a, 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 more time than it should have to import these and get them all set up. So yeah, it's it's a fucking bitch. Y yes, I would have, but the problem is, is that I, I would have done it manually. What if they add new items? Then I have to do those manually. Like think like down the line when they update Forge. And also like maybe those other uses. Well, also this this specifically this format is useful. There's a lot more than just object IDs here. So I get this section. So is is it always the last four bytes? Or no, the, the one, two, one, one, two, three, four. This should be the object ID. Seventeen, five. Seven, seventeen, five, ending in 03, ending in 03. Okay, yes. No, J Josh is just talking shit. You know, he 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 knows. He's jo that, that's that's the Josh. That's the Josh that's helped me with a bunch of bullshit. 
Without Josh, this project probably would have died months. <laughs> we probably would have died like two months ago. <laughs> uh, I would have probably like wanted to just. I would probably just given up once I had to like figure out what all the, the like the actual map file, like all those fucking things mean. Okay, so to get, I guess to get the ID that I care about. But yeah, no, Josh is, he's British, so his humor is a little, like, weird. Unless you're also Bridget, British, then you understand. So, like, at that point, like, you guys can just, like, angrily drink tea at each other or whatever you guys do when you're mad. Or something. Bro, there's so many British, I swear to God, it's like every fucking person is like, there are no... It's all Europeans, all British people and German Germans and mainly British people, actually. I, I'm convinced there's only Canadians and British people. I guess the only Canadian I've seen is unique, but like, was oh, he streaming actually? Or is he taking a break before the big day? I wouldn't, I don't blame him. He's been like putting in some hours. Well, at least you're like maybe in the same time zone as me. <laughs> uh, you're like at least you're in the same time zone. That's all I got to say. Well, probably in the same time zone. He's doing a four. Yeah, he's probably sleeping. I would be, but I don't plan on like fucking everything up. I don't want to like because like. Uh, What was I doing? So let's make us let's get a scuffed object ID. So it's specifically in the zone set data. So have I already gotten all the bytes? I have. Two hour difference. Sona stream some G fuel. <laughs> oh god. Actually, that might be okay. I've never had G fuel, but that sounds alright. Yeah, it's just uh, it's so many. It is the, the crazy thing is, is like my YouTube analytics aren't even like it's like not even British. It's like two percent British, but like the only people that talk and chat are British. I guess besides me and other Derek. And you, and uh, a few other people. So I need to get the z so the zone set data starts. So it's a long, isn't it? The position's a long. Yes, it is. So we have zone set start. So we go bytes. Leslie, I know, I know, I'm a, I, I still might have a, sh a shot at beating them. I'm about to, hope, maybe if I'm lucky, I'll get every static item imported to a blender by the end of today. So what's the zone? Oh, hold on. What's the zone set length? Uh. So we start at not on a zone set start plus header dot zone set data size minus f minus eight. Wait, fuck YouTube. Wait, did something happen? Did YouTube die? 
Okay, no. You said fuck you too. You got me scared because like we've been we've been cra I had a few crashes the other day. All right, and, like with the uh, Twitch stream dying. That's why I'm streaming today because I'm like I don't have to, I don't have that happen tomorrow. You know what I mean? He keeps eating your messages. Oh yeah, no, I agree, dude. YouTube chat is dog shit. There, you can't. You can. YouTube is a streaming platform. I fucking like it. It's like. The videos just stay up, like, suggestions are decent, analytics are all right, like, you know, it's pretty solid. There's also the ability to go back in time and watch old shit. But when it comes to the chat, man, oh my god, what are they doing? Like, fix it. Um, hold on. What's the easiest way to get a um, C sharp byte array subarray? Holy shit! Get us! I've already googled this problem because it's clicked. <laughs> What's the easiest way to get a subarray of a byte? Array dot copy. Oh, good, yeah, good idea. Array dot copy. Yeah, I remember that. Copy the source. Hold on. Oh yeah, the yeah. No, I remember doing this. So we go, we go bytes, and then the start index of this, which would be zone set start. Plus header dot zone set data size minus eight. Destination array would be This looks like something you yeah, know shit. <laughs> uh. I don't know if those messages are at me or important. Oh, it's Josh. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> oh my god. That actually looks pretty good. I will be I'm gonna be honest. Like that actually uh, Nice styrofoam. That actually uh that doesn't look too bad. Oh no, Josh, you upgraded as well? Not like this. I thought you said you went back to Windows 10 when you broke it like a month ago. I didn't know you went to Windows 11. Or is that Windows 10? I can't tell. That looks like Windows 11 because those came default on the fucking taskbar. I'm judging your taskbar, all right? You left them up, Josh. Look, you wasted valuable real estate like that's still open and that's still there and that's still there who needs the window store on the hot key <laughs> uh, you gotta have room for all of this you know like you're you gotta have like this thing that you had open like a few hours ago that you've not touched since and you know this uh uh this uh uh this team viewer instance that you've had open for probably like six weeks and you've never closed so copy so we're going to copy from there to the destination array of OBJ ID, OBJ ID and the length of four. What are you yelling at me now? It takes four arguments. No, one, two, you, what do you mean there is an instance? Yes, there is. You're lying to me. You're lying. Liar. There is something that takes four.
I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna copy this all over to Ryder. Yeah, I fucking hate. Oh, I'm missing one. The destination index. The new content browser. You mean for Halo? Like, uh... <laughs> you mean the, the, I seen the video that Seraja made, like, a month ago, showing off, like, the file share and shit. But that was from, like, the, the leaked build, so... Have they, have they shown anything? Have they shown some stuff? Since, uh... I'm not, I don't really pay attention to this game. I just like to live in my own little bubble of doing this and like talking shit about British people and their weird drinks. What did he, what did you do now? What'd you put in it? He made it worse. He's, he ruined it. How do you go from something that actually looks good to looking like vomit? What did you do? about the website oh is it all gonna be, is it gonna be a website browser as well like the old school halo days like with the what was it called what was bungie's fucking website called? what was the bungie website called because if you can browse everything from your uh from your browser and stuff that's gonna be sick i mean i don't know seeing i don't see any reason why they wouldn't allow it because most of their like everything is like http anyway or https Waypoint, the way, the way, that waypoint, thank you. We'll have a browser. Okay, that's sick. Nice. So that means I can link directly to it and stuff. He's a consistency of so <laughs> That looks so fucking bad, Josh. Don't, don't drink that. And uh, clearly you haven't taken my advice to remove the whatever. Have you ever opened that ever? Okay? Like... <laughs> Have you ever opened that app? Oh, God. All right. Uh, we run it, and we see if we get the numbers we care about. What do you mean? Oh, semicolon, fuck off. Object ID. Okay. Uh, it's, um... Dot parse? Can you parse a byte array? What's the C sharp byte? It's gonna be a bit converter thing, isn't it? I literally have already clicked these. I've literally already clicked these. It is a bit converter. I was right. Bunch of nerds. Yeah, we're uh Making huge progress right now. What's the zero for? What's the zero for? It doesn't matter. I get it once this works. I don't know. What is this? Uh, start index. Google is trying to like do stuff. Send it. Object ID is that is that the correct ID? Negative three forty ending in fifty three. Nice. Okay. This is big. So now all we do is we replace the file name with every file and we loop over every file in this directory. And then we can get the object ID. Now we don't have the ability to get all the uh, other stuff, but like that's a start. 
Now I need to look on the Blender side of things of automating the import and deleting the irrelevant stuff. Fuck. Um... See, the problem is, is if you go f import Halo render model, let, let's do this. Uh, I'll show you the problem with this. So let's say we go, let's just go do, it doesn't matter. I'll just import a primitive, whatever. This it does not, it does not matter what we import because it's going to be a problem with, it's going to be a problem with everything. And this is going to be a bitch. So you import the render model and you add materials. It, Import for text work, import UVs. We definitely want the UVs. Import 3D model, uh, existing textures, blah, 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 blah. It should be fine. So when you import this, it imports. So look, it actually, it's working. You see, it's like the fancy modeled version or whatever, and it looks all fancy. Hello, duckling. The problem is that it imports multiple things. So you see here, we have the, the trapezoid, and then we also have the shadow cast bullshit, which we don't give a fuck about. And also, there's like UVs that also need to be deleted as well. So like, the first UV map is like, what the fuck is this? And then uh, UV1 is actually the one that you want to keep. And I think it's always UV1, so we have to automate deleting the other two. And then we need to automate deleting of the thing we don't care about. So there's like, blow, blow my brains out. Like, and I'm not, I think there could potentially be more objects. Like there could be multiples of bullshit. Like, add vodka to my core. Stop. Don't get don't encourage him. It's already green. It was blue and now it's green. He's gonna get like I don't even know. Import render model, son of a bitch. So I got to think of a way, how do I get the right? I guess I could just be like super stupid about it and just check for the word shadow, but I know there's other, <sighs> there's going to be a lot of weird, like there's going to be a few edge cases here because if I come over here and I go to an actual object, that's not a primitive. Let's say we go to biomes, generic, flora. Okay, no, let's go to um, something that I know is actually forge uh, item. Forge props. Toys. Grunt. And we import this model. And we import the render model. You're going to notice something. Okay, I might have um, found a solution. I think the name is always... There's always a dot and then the, fi the, 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 the parent folder name. Because that, sh that foe underscore prop underscore toy underscore grunt underscore a so if it so i guess we do the check if it, if the item imported doesn't match if the the name doesn't match the folder name exactly we remove it and then we pray probably like six months yeah it's 
That poor Unity game, oh god. See, I just delete my old projects that I never been coming back to, so I don't ever have to feel bad about them. This project, though, I've been, like, very, like, diligent on, like, the keeping backups and stuff. Like, I've been, like, making sure that I at least have, like, something somewhere else, because the amount of time I put in this bullshit, I'm not about to lose it. So, we have the object ID, and then we have... bpy.offsetinfinite.rendermodel. Okay, well, let's just clown around a bit. So, file, import, bpy ops infinite render model. bpy.ops. What happens if I run that? Oh, come on, that's right. Just do it in the fucking, the, the stupid interpreter bullshit. Like, I know, Jesus. But what, why don't I see the fucking... What can I type in here? Uh, M... Okay, what are you yelling... Okay, what are you yelling at me for now? So is it is it literally this is this is why I hate this so much. So what I'm doing right now is we have a problem and this is technically this isn't an issue because Serasia was kind enough before to basically give us most of this. But what I'm trying to do so technically I could have already skipped all of this pro all of this bullshit, but I'm there's a reason why I'm uh, doing this uh, when when I say this. Inside of these .forge object data files which are when you unpack Halo with the unpack, there's like an unpacking tool or whatever that gives you, that you can access like the render model and stuff. There's these forge object, whatever the fuck files. So I've collected them all and I'm trying to read and get the object ID because inside of these, we actually have relative paths for all the assets that make up this object. And then down here, we also, I think it's this, these four bytes are the object ID. And then down lower in the file, somewhere in this big bunch of data, is the variant IDs. So, to be able to make dynamic objects work, you need these the data down here at the bottom. Like you need to know the dynamic uh, the, the the variant IDs because dynamic objects are only variants. They they're only var only ever variants of the original object. Like they're never they don't have they don't they, they don't have the same fucking ID. So at fir for first, I'm trying to get all the ID uh, IDs of all this stuff. And the file that Serasia gave had actually actually had all the relative paths and object IDs, which is how Josh set up the Forge Constants bullshit like a month ago. But the problem is, is that I need to be able to read that, like, let's say the game updates. I just need to, I wanted to set up something that's, hey, unpack the new game, scan all the files, import the ones that are missing. for quick load no i'm trying i'm trying my in-game goal which i don't know if it's going to get this far i want to truly be able to entirely forge in blender so like the like the layout stuff i've already done a i've already did a i already made a blocked out a scent in the last stream i blocked out a scent or at least the rest of a scent in like probably like six hours of time and then, like, it imported it all nice and clean. I mean, there's a few, like, issues around the map because I was, like, lazy about it like that. And I was, like, trying to be quick. But most of the fixes like that are easy to fix. Like, the little corner there. and I really... I actually like Forge. <laughs> the thing is, is, like, I actually, like, from from doing this and blocking out the level in Blender compared to forge um 
oh, it is so bad. Like, here, I'll give you an example. Let's load up a scent. Let, let's, let's, uh, let's load up a scent real quick, and I'll give, you, I'll, I'll, I'll give you the example that I gave before. Or here's the block out of a scent. So let's say, let's, um, let's turn on... Um, hold on, let's turn on this. So let's say I'm recreating the map. So I'm going to put a cube here, and I'm going to, let's say, like, obviously in Halo, you're not going to have the reference. You're not going to have, like, the reference of, like, the actual map and stuff. But inside of, pretend we're inside of Halo, and that there was already, like, you already made this wall here, or whatever. And it's like, you scaled it down and snapped it, or whatever. And you already had the, the wall here on the left. And you already had the wall here on the right. Or the, you know, the, the little, like, corner piece. In Forge, inside of Halo, how do you make this cube that I'm placing now to perfectly snap to this wall without, like, how do you make this, how do you make this work? Now, in this case, inside of Forge, actually, it wouldn't be a big deal to come over here and just, like, monkey scale it like this well, with snapping off and just, like, have, have clipping inside the blocks. Like, that's actually not a big deal in this case. So, like, this isn't a problem because there's, not, there's no visible Z fighting. But what, about in the, but what about in the instance of, like, well, actually, there, well, actually, there would be visible Z fighting because, I, I take that back, this is a, gr a pretty good example for my point. Uh, give me back to scale cage. So, like, in the instance that you need to, you know, you're making the railing here, snap it to here, snap it to here. I don't know why you're not snapping right. Snap it to here, and then this goes to there. I'll try to make the example. I'm trying to give a, the best example I can. Uh, and then to here. And then to here. So, if I turn off... I put these back in the map and then turn off. There's going to be Z fighting between the two blocks if you monkey scale it. Uh, so the, the, at least the big benefit of it is that I'm going to undo what I just did because I don't actually want to have those because it's going to cause Z fighting when I try to when I work on this map more later. So like the problem is, is that it's a pain in the ass to be able to... I'll just put these in isolate. I'll, I'll isolate these. It's a pain in the ass to be able to, like... Well, it's, it's not even, like, snapped right. Like, there's going to be Z fighting here. Actually, for some reason, you don't see... Oh, it's probably because the rotation of this is slightly off. That would do it. That happens sometimes with the way that I'm spawning these things in. Um, that's something that I actually plan on fixing. But, like, you're going to have, if you monkey scale it, like, you're going to have Z fighting here. So, like, basically in Forge, putting a cube in between two, putting an object in between two other objects is a pain in the ass. But in, in Blender, with the snapping tools onto Vertex, it's as simple as come here and, like, you take the center point of this. You know, it's not perfect. Obviously, you take it, you snap it to that wall, and you take this side, and you snap it to that corner, and you're done. The monkey scale, the, the fucking, like, when, you, when you're just, like, an idiot about it, and you're just like, hey, let's just, like, scale it like this, and not being perfect. Like, in the, you can't, like, just scale, because, like, this is, like, the same tool. Like, you have to, this is the, the same way that Halo scales. You know, you, you scale it, like, just, like, oh, let's just not get the position perfect, and, like... I guess like slightly lower this because they're to stop the Z fighting and it's like, yeah, that's a solution. And you have like a slight clip here, but let's say you don't want to have any of these like weird edges and you want to like not have to deal with Z. You want it to, you want it to be perfect, but you don't want Z fighting. The solution to that is to type the numbers in exactly. You don't care about the face. Is it, uh, it uh, it's just, scale. But like, I, I, maybe I'm doing a bad job at explaining this. The main thing is, is um, well, like typing it is slow. Like it's incredibly slow, because like you, I mean, obviously you have to find the center between the two, so you have to like kind of like, you know, like math it out and find the center, or you know, maybe there's some other better technique. But like with two clicks like that, this object is now perfectly full. It will be perfectly flush once I snap it. It's now perfectly flush 
on this plane, perfectly flush on this plane, not intersecting with this, perfectly flush on this plane of the cube, and uh, this uh, is perfectly uh, is good as well. And it also, basically scaling with the scale cage tool in Blender is the reason why I'm I'm pursue, continue to pursue this, and also just better snapping. Because actually, a thing you could do, a better way to handle this, and this is why I wish Blender would ha uh, window had Blender had this. So we go edge. So uh, actually, this isn't the best example, but let's say I wanted to like snap in between two point. Oh shit! No, don't do that. Let's say like these two things were snapped, but they were like in line like this. So like they're they're like these two edges are parallel. Well, per is there what's the word for parallel and uh? Parallel and also the same. I don't, there's probably a word for that. But like another thing you could do is since these two points here on the bottom, like this point here and this point here, are, uh, there's got to be a way to do this. There we go. So you, you basically, you select both of these objects, you go into edit mode, and then you select the two vertices here, cursor to selected, cursor goes in the middle, select this, and then cursor to uh, selected a cursor, and now this is perfectly in the middle. So now, actually, if you wanted to do like the the kind of like monkey like whatever strat without snapping, this would like allow you to like. No, come on, don't do that. It would allow you to actually like scale it in like this direction without snapping, as long as you know the exact number, you know. But like snapping, you know, you don't need the number because you can just go do that, and then now they're both flush. And this is this is just like the like the first uh, like iteration of it. I plan. This is going to take a little bit more work to do. And this doesn't currently work, but it will work. And I think it's going to work through. I'm going to make it work through the no, uh, geometry nodes. But let's say you wanted to do something like this. Let's say there you have an array like array modifier of like you know twenty things and looking at the wrong thing. It's like let's say you wanted to do that. You know, create twenty two cubes you know, spaced after, let's say you're making like a platform, like a jump platform or whatever, and you wanted to have like a row of like cubes or whatever, like this. Or God forbid, you want them to go on a line. You want them to follow a line, kind of like how, hold on. We did a little bit of this before. Like in this video, where I made a really scuffed, poorly like Z-clipped fight out of its fucking brained map of like a racetrack. Obviously, there's no rotation on these blocks in the positions you find or whatever, but that's because this was like a really early, like I was throwing this together for a, like a, a click, but there's nothing stopping you for coming in here, you know, creating a, which what I did in that actually is I created a, a, a curve and then just like took this curve and used this as a way of, um, as a way of like, uh, oh, come on, you know, like this, and then made a try, you know, generated blocks around it. Obviously that's a bit, doing that is a bit more effort. You know, it's still, it's still probably a bit more effort on my side to get this to work, but using like Blender's modifier tools to like array or even like geometry nodes, if you want to go even further, to like randomly play stuff around, which is what I did which is what I've done for uh, that one video, like randomly placing bullshit in the, uh, the, I forget what video it was. And another thing, at least one, uh, another thing is, is uh, I don't have to like deal with, I guess my thing is, is that Blender is a tool that I'm already familiar with and I feel like more people are familiar with. And it also, like, not only do I get to make maps for a game, I also get to, like, l like start learning the hotkeys and getting better and faster at Blender instead of just getting better and faster at Forge, which is kind of like a dead-end program. You know, like, what, what am I... Me being fast at Forge, like, that's cool. But, like, if I can learn how to be fast at Blender while also making Halo maps, it's, like, that's a win-win for, like, future projects and shit that are more than likely going to use Blender instead of, you know... The Halo editor, I guess, technically, technically, I could make it reverse. You know, when I technically when I make the importing a map into Blender, like when I go the other way, because right now it's only going from Blender to Halo, 
when I make the other when when I make the flip work, and you go from Halo to Blender, technically, you could Blender in Halo. You know, it's Blender for Halo at that point instead of Forge for Blender, or uh, Blender for Forge instead of Forge for Blender, or whatever. Like you get my point. But there's a lot of uh, time savings to happen. I mean, I blocked out the whole map in like six, seven hours. This whole map in six or seven. And I'm like an absolute idiot and like floundered around and then like spent probably like half an hour trying to figure out the best way to snap a rotation here to like to snap. And then I was like, why the fuck am I being difficult? Why don't I just do this? And it's already like the rotation's already there. I don't know. But uh it's I feel like once the at least once the terrain tools are in, uh like the in the instance like when like when with unique when unique remade Bud Gulch, when the terrain tools are in, you know, let's say we have like uh I don't know if there's like a random terrain. But you know, like let's just create a couple balls. No, uh actually let's just UV spheres. And probably um so like we have we create a couple of UV spheres and like we're gonna pretend this is like terrain. You know, like terrain and then like you know terrain. So like from this angle, like assume like this is like you know like a terrain or whatever. So like when I get the terrain tools in, all you really need to do is like maybe like wireframe, like look through the view, and then just like place the terrain following like the curves here in Blender. Which is going to be nice because then you don't have to like eyeball it or create a bunch of fucking dots on the map or cones. You don't have to cone that bitch up. I don't know. I just like Blender. All right. Actually, I think I might like Houdini more, but I'm really bad at it and I need to like learn it. I just like the idea of Houdini. But like Blender's like, Blender's getting so good. Like the past few like updates, like ever since like probably like Blender like 2.9. Three, four, no, they, bro, stop joking about that shit. I don't want to be hired at a company that is going to fuck. I don't want to work with that. That's the last company I want to work for. Literally the last. Literally, well, unless they offered something ridiculous, which I don't have the, I'm telling you, I don't have the credentials or the experience to like, to do that. You know, I don't, I don't got that. I don't got that kind of like. I don't got those creds. Yeah. Yeah, like, like geometry nodes are great. It's just there's certain things in geometry nodes that it geometry nodes just feel like they've not been in development for the past 30 years on like Houdini's uh the whole Houdini uh, ecosystem of like all the different like 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 node con like all the different like geometry contexts and like all the different like they have like their own like each little like context inside of Houdini doing a separate thing and they all can kind of like connect together in a really cool way and like a really cool procedural way and it's like geometry nodes were like kind of have only been meant for one thing right now like geometry nodes will be sick probably in like 10 years. It will probably actually be like comparable to like what you can do in Houdini in a lot of ways. It's just right now it's like it's good for like one specific thing. But Houdini's fucking sick though. Like I've debated just saying fuck free CAD and just doing <laughs> doing CAD like shit in that <laughs> just because uh, how pain in the ass FreeCAD's been, and I hate all the other solutions of fucking CAD software. Like, honestly. Because, like, there's no reason why you can't do a, a CAD-like thing in Houdini. And Houdini is so fucking like. Wait, Houdini. Wait, are you, are you talking about? 
But then there's the other one. Houdini's the here. Houdini's the. Oh, you mean res? Oh, you talking about resolve? Oh, yeah, no. Houdini is the. Hold on. I'm trying to find the example. So I'm, hold on. Let me bring this over here and I'll find it. I have it saved. Never mind. I don't have it saved. It's saved on my phone. Fuck. Uh, I don't have it. Here. Here's like an example. Uh, this is like, they have like courses and stuff you can pay, uh, like buy or whatever. But there's like the, the fluid simulation shit. Like, like, and all this stuff being like procedural. Like this is like just one side of it. If it ever decides to fucking load, I guess. Turn that off. Like the fluid simulation stuff. Now a lot of the a lot of like the visual effects. I mean specifically the the, the like the flip fluid bullshit. Um, you can actually like bake that out into like a mesh and like use that in game engines. It's just a lot of it like it requires like a few extra steps to actually be usable and like Unity or Unreal. It, it takes a little bit more effort. But like the all the procedural tools, it's just so fucking cool. But you know, resolve, yeah, uh, you're fucking resolves. I w bro. I just I'm just accepting the fact that all editing software is dog shit, and resolves like the lesser of dog shit of the other options. Okay, so new general, don't save. Import, no, import, render model. Hmm, render model. Is that imported right? Yes. There's an add-on that does something like that in Blender, but they're under tech. Yeah, um... It's just when it comes to like the simulation stuff, it's like a pain in the ass to get into. Even I think even in Blender, it takes a couple extra steps to like get it into a state that a game can use it, a game engine can use it. I haven't actually tried to fully do it. All I know is like there's a, depending on specifically what you're doing. The visual effects stuff is normally a pain in the ass, but I'm more interested. My my specific thing for Houdini is I'm interested in actually like the, there's like building generators and shit in Houdini that will just allow you to like let's say if you're working on Unreal. And Unreal, you decided to place down like a cube like this, like a basic cube in Blender or in Unreal. If you use the Houdini engine and like, you know, set up the, the cube correctly, you could take this cube, pipe it through the Houdini engine, and then out would pop up like a complicated house or whatever. You know, like there would be like a door here and like a wall and like a little roof and stuff. It's like super sick. Basically allowing you to like very easily create variants of different assets in your game. That's specifically the reason why I'm interested in it. Because assuming, you know, you make a bunch of assets in Houdini, or you make some assets in Houdini, you could potentially reuse them a lot without being repetitive. Good old caustics. Fucking... Oh yeah, what is this again? Render model. BPY ops infinite render model. BPY. PY dot ops dot. So I need to go and let's grab. Oh, where's my. I'm going to assume I put in, I put this in. Plus this. Plus this. Will you import? What did you? I need to go. Uh, what's the easiest way to like? Fuck, I gotta go. What's there's gotta be an easy way to view this. You could, uh, 
Yeah, so, um, I, I'll show an example. Just because it's so fucking cool. Like, this is what got me, and this is what got me interested in Houdini in the first place. Here we go. Here, this is what I was talking about, actually. So you see here on the left, these black blocks, these are, like, primitives inside of the Unreal Engine. So these aren't, like, these are just, like, stuff that Unreal, you can, like, drag and drop. Kind of like how primitives in Halo are. And on the right here, you can see there's Z fighting from when, like, it's fight, uh, the stuff's happening. But you see when he hits the re he's going to hit the rebuild button. And on top of all the black stuff, all the black cubes, if he... I don't know what he's, do I don't know what he's doing in the video right now. Um, if I speed it up... Oh, you see there, now it, it generated, like, a whole, like, railing thing and, like, stuff around the, the, uh, the cubes. So what he's probably going to do is he's going to probably hide the cubes that he'd used. And then now you've got, like, the block based off of the cubes you used. It's so fucking cool. Like, like look, there's, like, vari there's like broken railings and variation and clutter on the ground. And, like, it's crazy what you can do. Like, he's made this whole-ass environment from just, like, placing fucking blocks around because he had a tool. Like, imagine how fucking powerful this is for creating, like, you know, the game worlds. You know, you spend, like you know, a reasonable amount of time in, you know, Houdini making a tool like this, and then, like, a, like your level designers can just make beautiful, like, relatively, like, decent, like, varied, you know, things like this. And the thing is, is it doesn't even have to be additive. You can actually, like, use the, uh, use the blocks as, like, you could, like, subtract from them. Like, let's say you want to have, like, a block that, like, let's say you, like, you want to set up a tool for, like, a level designer that, to add on to this, let's say like, oh shit, well, I actually wanted to put a hole in this. You know, you can make the tool like, you know, like, basically you're, the control, what you can do is like more or less, you, there's not really a limit to what you can and can't do. It's, it's fucking crazy. Oh, that's the secret photo. I, I wanted to watch this. There's so much cool stuff, stuff you can do like this. Like you can see like, he's changing like, um he's changing parameters here on the right. This is a really old video. This is a really old version of Houdini, but you can see as he's like changing variables on the right, different elements of the house are getting randomized. And you can see here he's got like a cube and another cube, and then like it's getting it's generating stuff around the blocks. This this is with inside of uh, Houdini, but you can do this inside of a game engine. Uh the from the way that I've from some of the videos that I've actually watched, the way they approach it actually isn't like that. They because uh, Houdini actually gets fed that geometry. So like back in the other example, the the actual cubes here, the actual like the ramp here and the blocks, that actually gets fed directly back into, back into Houdini. So you have like all the vertices and the normals and like basically you have all the data. So what you could do is like work at it face by face is what I've seen people, uh, that's kind of how I've seen people explain it. So like for the railing here, you know, like the the railing on the stuff, you would get the face, you basically get the faces pointing not up. Basically every face that probably has like a 90 degree like angle to the floor. You would grab all those and then like extrude something up off of them by like the height of the railing. And then that would be like a, a parameter you would put on the side to like, hey, here's the railing height. And then you would like probably like subdivide that railing and then like delete every other one to make like holes in it. Or whatever, or and then you'd actually probably sub, you'd probably actually put like cylinders there instead of whatever. But it's that's the kind of process that you go uh, go through, instead of like going like the more like you know like the, the marching cube or like the more like, like the the difficult approach, which would that would be. You, it's like a really really weird way of modeling of thinking about of creating of creating assets because you have to think of like what happens. If a thing's rotated or whatever, you need to be like super generic in the way you implement this. But it's really cool. And it's the one thing that's actually kind of led me to want to potentially go down a more like technical artist route. Because like doing making Houdini assets like this, it's like it blends both worlds of like art and programming together in a way that's like like really cool. And that's what I want the Blender node graph to be, but I doubt it's ever going to be. It's just the Houdini, the one, the great thing is the Houdini any license. Uh, 
having a stroke. Like Houdini's expensive. They've all they've got a free version that you can just use to like whatever to play or whatever. But the indie the indie price is only three hundred. It's only uh, two seventy a year, or four hundred for two, which is actually like reasonable as fuck. Like two seventy divided by twelve is again it's twenty two a month, but it's one of these things that like with like the kind of power with the price that it is and it not being like literally like three thousand dollars or like you know it's expensive i mean you pay you have to pay like the, this amount for like the whole fucking adobe adobe creative cloud but like you know like it's, it's bullshit it's also got a steam release as well but for 400 for uh two years uh, four hundred divided by twenty-four comes out to be sixteen dollars a month, which is like a fucking. I think that's a steal for the kind of for the program that this is. Well, it's not, well, not video, but fucking modeling, fucking trolling me. Uh, yeah, I'm using. Again, I don't, I don't, I, I, I don't, yeah, I don't, uh, uh, piracy is one of those things that it's like, it's like not a good thing. I don't think it's definitely like probably not a good thing, but at the same time, if you're like broke as fuck, like my, my, my process, my, here's my thought process on piracy. If I had, if I could afford it, I would buy it. That's all I have to say on it. Unless it's Photoshop, and then, like, I think even billionaires should pirate that shit because fuck Adobe. <laughs> Fucking goddamn it. Oh, son of a bitch. Sons of bitches. I need to go figure out extra. No, not extra objects. Uh, Halo. I need to go to the. But yeah, like if I was like if I was like making and developing a game and I was like and I actually had like a reasonable income um you know, paying for the shit I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't have a problem. I think this is the right one. Oh yeah, Twitch's delays way lower. Uh sorry about that. Uh YouTube is, I, I can make the YouTube delay better, but I'm scared because it has acted weird in the past. So what was the, op it was ops.infinite.render model. We should be able to search and find when they re where they registered that or not. Render model about pi. Yeah, that's that's like, yeah, that's fucking rough. Holy shit. yeah! <laughs> oh god. You say that, and you're only like. Like I know you're I know you're like actually half joking, but it's like crazy because like in some countries it fucking is. like it, there's like a reason why the whole like Venezuelan like meme thing happened because like you know it's like it's crazy. Like I mean, even if you don't live in those places, I you could like actually like set up some like like RuneScape bot farms to like actually make some decent side money. I have a, I, I know a person. I 
I, I have a friend. Russia smash. I mean, where's the execute thing at? Because it executes so on the on the operator that we're looking at, we want <coughs> some shit in my throat. <clears throat> I gotta figure this out. Oh yeah, true. I gotta go do that. I feel like g making RuneScape bots profitable is, like, difficult if you're not willing to, like, develop some of your own shit because, like, some of the bot stuff is actually expensive. Like, r it's ridiculous, like, how much people charge. I, 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 again, like I said, I have a friend. Where's the channel point stuff at? Hold on, I know how to get to it. If I go here, here, manage requests, rewards. Wait, what? Get three months of PC Game Pass with the purchase of two subs or gift subs. Wait, what? Bro, nice. That's cool. Okay. Is that wait, is that even for even for people that have already subbed for it? Shit, that's an okay deal, I think. Where's it at? Oh, there's the, there it is. Wait, no. I don't know how to do it as the streamer. I don't know how to do it as a mod. Moderate. Oh yeah, I need to like add emotes to this shit. Like. I don't know how to do this. Activity, maybe? I don't know. I don't know what to do. I'm going to... Your, your points can just sit there, okay? You can just sit there and you could just, like... Oh, no, 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 no. I know what I need to do. I know what I need to do. I'm, I'm trolling, I'm trolling, I'm trolling. I know I know what I'm I know what I need to do. I just realized I thought about it for a moment. Oh, where's my other tab? It's over here. So when we do the import.render model, so when whatever this runs. So I'm pretty sure once you're done selecting, it does execute. Why is it doing dev process mesh? Honestly, like I'd have an easier time to do that.
Prioritize.operator. Is there a way to like... Is there no way to... <clears throat> so if I, if I run this now... Hold on, I've got to figure out how to do this. Import. Render model. Import. Why has Spotify been doing that? What happens if I do that? It's gonna yell at me because that's not fucking that makes sense. So how the fuck do I set the file path? <clears throat> Cause it's like this import router model is what this is the class that registers it, and then the execute Should be what sets it up. This is this should be this execute should be actually what imports it, which it is. Where the fuck does it get? Where the fuck does this get called? Hey, Ron. So I'm fucking blowing my brains at why game. No, open. What do you? Okay. Wait, what? Oh, I'm, I'm, oh, I see. You did a thing. Register. Yeah, I'm, my brain. Yeah, jo don't, Josh is just troll. He's British, so he's like, you know, you know how, you know how British people are. They like, they think they're funny or something, I think. At least that's every British person I've ever met. They think they're funny. Josh is okay. He's funny, kind of, I think. Return open. Rend Is it open render model? Is that what I is that the method that I actually care about? I think it is. I think open render model is the thing that I actually care about. But open render model is declared inside this fucking method. It's like if I'm understanding this correctly, it looked like it was or no, I think it might be inside of
I feel like it's like scoped. Source parts for a text bar. So. What is the, so it's open render model and then the F that's being passed in. Unique, hello. The thing that's being passed in is the output of open. Okay. So what is it? Pulling my hair out. I don't think I can call this externally without like restructuring this a little bit. Scale, import, render model. Do you know if you can merge? Yes. Well, it depends on how you're trying to merge items together. So if you're like trying to like, if, you're tr if your goal is to move two items at the same time through like the node graph, it's more difficult. But yes, you can group items. Yes, you, yeah, you can do that. You can, um, the hotkey on, uh, on keyboard is like control G or something or shift G. And then you can like all of them like get grouped into a prefab and then you can move them. Wait, what are you talking about, Unique, about the porting? Wait, what are you talking about? What are you talking... Oh, oh, wait. Yeah, you you can merge stuff to Forge. I, I don't know what you're talking about with the port. Uh... It sounded like you're talking about like I don't know, but we're basically what we're doing, I'm trying, I'm import, I'm in the process of importing every single Forge item into Blender, uh, and I'm trying to figure out how to automate this. All leaked build maps into Retail Forge. I wouldn't worry about it. Worst case, wor worst case scenario. Within the first few hours, I'll have like a shitty hacked way around to get it, or it will be stupid easy. All right, it'll be easy. I'll find a stupid dumbass way that's like that someone else will like will replace in like two hours, unless it's difficult, and then I'll just wait for Serage to figure it out. Yeah. So, uh, because it should be, um, Unless for some reason they've changed how the Master Chief collection, they've unless they've completely went off base and they've changed how the Master Chief collection works, I'm pretty sure your MVARs and stuff are saved to your disk, like in here. Pretty sure, like even in like here, like there's all the different MVAR bullshit. Like I'm pretty sure, like. Wait, but if it's like, wait, was Halo 5 all online? Um. Well, you'd have to go see what's the Halo 5 Forge on Windows 10 bullshit release like. Like, uh, I don't, I, don't worry about it. There will be a fix, okay? Like, somebody will e either, two options here. Somebody will 
it won't be a problem and you can just load it up like you think you would. Or one of the four JPI people will like figure out how to submit the file to like the server without even having to open the damn game. Because it, that actually might not even be that hard. I could look into it in like the first few hours. I, like everyone probably there's gonna be a few people doing the exact same thing. But all you would do is like open like Fiddler or some of the other like you know tools like that, and then you would basically submit a map to your file share and see what API calls are called, and then just like recreate them outside of the game, and then boom. Unless that's more that easier said than done. Okay. But that's kind of like, I, I see that as being a possibility. Because most of the way that the game interacts is just AT, uh, HTTP requests anyway. So, like, that's the, most of the menu shit. And I don't, I, I would be very surprised if um, submitting, like, your maps and stuff are any different. Now, if ever, now this might break everything that we've been working on, Josh. That's the thing, is it might literally break. Everything might die. And if that's the case, I'm... I don't know, it's fucking... Hopefully it doesn't break anything. What was the name of this file? What if I just try being an idiot about it? Let's go import, import uh, comment that out. I'm losing I'm losing it. Okay, are you gonna yell at me that this doesn't exist or there's a problem? No module named render model. Oh, good, good, good point. The Python console, what's important here is the module. Dedicated idiots, yeah. BPY dot ops. There we go. Uh, no, I have. So I think it was Josh or somebody yelled at me to use this. Uh, use the dark. No, it wasn't Josh. It was somebody yelled at me to just use dark reader. And it's more or less perfect for most websites. Some I have to turn off because it freaks out, but it, it's nice. <laughs> okay, well, listen. Okay, maybe this is a little shallow. Okay, so it's two part. The reason I'm here, there's three parts. There's three reasons why I'm here. This kind of shit is fun, one. Second is Josh being like, having like a, like a partner in crime, like Josh doing like his own like dumbass shit as well. That that's a big thing. If it was just me, I would like be like pulling my hair out. But you know, like Josh was here early on to get me over the like the initial like I want to die, and now it's kind of like you know like like some Stockholm syndrome has like started to build up in me, you know. And then three, like apparently people care about this project, and if like people didn't, that would be like another like 
and everyone everyone was like this fucking project's dumb like you <laughs> oh god i'm telling you like imagine no i'm not gonna i'm not gonna i'm not gonna boss but but you, you keep doing you 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 got this I believe. File path. So let's see if this works. I forgot the, so I figured out how to do it. So we go here and we put the file path here. Slash. Oh, no, no, that's right. These need to be forwarders. Spotify, why are you doing that? You, uh, sorry, YouTube can't hear the music. Sorry, YouTube doesn't like that. Uh, Twitch has, like, a way to make music not. So, I'm telling you, tomorrow Twitch is... Actually, I would really prefer everyone watch the YouTube stream, but it's because it's, like, the YouTube... YouTube views me a lot more than fucking Twitch. I'm telling you, analytics on YouTube pump it. You don't even play infinite donut. Well, see, yeah, like, see, somebody, somebody likes it. Oh no no. Copy, paste. No no no. Comment you run you. No module named render. Oh yeah, no. I remove that. I was being stupid. Did you work? Did it work? Okay, 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 guys, guys, guys. Okay, part one done. Part one done. All right, so listen. Now all I got to do is we have it, the programmatically importing items is done. Now we has got to loop over that for 2,000 some items. But there's more to, be, there's more to do than just that because uh, when I run this, so I mentioned this earlier, so when I run this, I just ran it. We're going to go to the layout and we're going to look. We imported the grunt and you're going to look like, what the fuck's wrong with him? Why does he look stupid? And that is because it imports extra shit. I don't know how much of this is extra shit. Let me run it one more time. So you see, there's two things. There's this grunt to in the dot invalid. Sometimes that can also be a dot shadow cast. Obviously, we care about this one, which conveniently is named after its thing dot the name of the parent, which I think this might be the parent, the folder name dot folder name. This, the first dot I know might be inconsistent. Wait, 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 you think it, Josh gifted. Thank you again. I, listen, you guys, I'm all over. I guess since this is like the most people here tomorrow. Starting at, um, when did I schedule the thing? Hold on. I'll, I'll pull it up. I'll pull it up. Starting tomorrow at this time. This is the, I scheduled it. That, that's the schedule. That's when it's happening. So however many hours that, that live stream is, uh, is when the, it's coming out. 1 p.m., right? That's when, didn't Artifice put that in the Discord? I swear he did. Or somebody did, or Serasure, some Knowing Lizard did. That's it. Somebody, I know someone did it. So 1 p.m. Eastern, we're sh all day. We are. I am making Node Graph requests, and it's all going to the file share. My file share gamer tag is Derek Create with no S, just like my name on Twitch. Um. So I'm making everything all day. All all of it's going to the file share. So anybody can use it and recreate it. I'm going to like explain, I'm going to try my best to like teach people that have no clue how the fuck node graph works. And I'm going to try to like not ramble like an idiot and like form sentences, sentences that are like a complete thought instead of like a run on like thought from like 10 minutes ago. And then I'll probably like cut out, I'll probably like cut down a bunch of bullshit. Prop hunt, probably not. Maybe. Are you CST? Uh, 
There's this thing. I don't know how to. I don't know how you do it. Serasia did it earlier. You can do it in Discord. Hold on, where's it at? Or was it Artifice that did it? Oh yeah, Serasia did it. Whatever the fuck. However, you how you do this? Like, how did he do that? Uh, Discord mar uh, mark mark down time. There's gotta be a way. To, I know there's because this specifically with how he did this, this is time zone specific. So whatever your computer set to, this will actually read as the correct time. So I actually don't know how. Uh, I don't know how to do that. So it's like T a T. Oh, it's the Unix timestamp. Oh, uh, I need a. Oh, there you go, Josh. Thank you. You got it. Wait, is this it? The seventh, the eighth at one p.m. There we go. So if you put that in your Discord, uh, that will, uh, sorry. Uh, so uh, how did you figure out the access could be transported and transferred to Blender back? The, okay, so it's, that's not really what's happening. It's, um, yeah, okay, so you, everyone got it, the Unix time T. So it's, that's, we're not really, the, Okay, so when I show you, if I were to show you the actual export of the, I would shout. Uh, there's no data stuff set. Oh, uh, shit. Uh, if I open, I'm not going to open it. Basically, there is no, like, actual assets going between the Halo and Blender. The assets that were, that I'm putting in the Blender here are just for, like, representation, like, just for, like, a visual. Because, like, obviously, you need to know, like, you know, you need, like, the visuals to be able to, like, forge accurately. So I'm importing the data from Halo. Thank God someone already made a tool for that. Because I would have been like, so I would have been like months behind right now. Um, and um, and, and um, what, what's really happening is the data is here. So actually I'll kind of show it. So on each of these objects inside of Blender, there, I'm setting object IDs down here for each one of these objects. And this is like the unique to each object. So each object in Forge has an item ID and also potentially a variant ID, depending on if it's a physic, if it's a, a dynamic object or not. Uh, the, the blender, so the, so basically all that I'm doing is exporting out this object ID into a tool that's external of Blender that's then converting it into like the map file. So all, all I'm really doing is re reading the scale and the rotation of this object in the position and then saving it out into the map file and then loading it up in Halo. Um, so like the Blender, the Forge, so the going from Blender to Forge, that's me and Josh. Well, I don't know what the, the Josh said it was, last time Josh said the split was 80-20, but like, again, like jo this wouldn't have existed for, uh, this wouldn't have existed because of Josh, but basically I've made the tool going from Blender to Halo, and then Josh made some made, did a lot of work on the like stuff that helps going from Blender to Halo. Ninety five percent now, yeah. Well, whatever. I mean, you you got all the object IDs and stuff, which I might have to fucking change that, which is gonna suck. Forge for Hammer Two, bro. Have you? Uh, well, you said Hammer Two. I assume. I assume you played, maybe you played Sandbox? I'm not sure. Hammer 2 is so good. I've, I didn't really do much in Hammer 1, but Hammer 2. Oh my god. He, look, look at the Sandbox friend. He mentions Hammer 2. I can't not bring it up, Josh, all right? It's, sandbox is so good. So why Blender to Halo and vice versa? So, so why, okay, so right now it only, we can only go to Blender to Halo because there's like more stuff I need to do. 
I don't know if you've actually forged before in Infinite. I don't know if you have access or not. Um, sandbox, exactly. See, yeah, see, I would be doing sandbox stuff right now. It's just, I'm like busy with this bullshit. So the one reason why you would want to forge in Blender, let's say like this, let's say you had like two immovable objects. Let's say like these were like towers or something that, like, let's say you wanted to, like, you have, like, two towers here or whatever, two, like, platforms, and you wanted to connect them with a bridge. This is one example. One, uh, one, one, uh, one example of this. So let's say you wanted to connect them with a bridge that's a cube. I'm not, I'm not showing this, this isn't exact, this isn't how you would use the tool. This is just for demonstration purposes. Uh, there's more nuances to using this tool. So in normal Halo, like, inside of Halo, you would have to like calculate the difference between like these two points to like perfectly oops to like perfectly size this thing so like you would scale it like this and like oh it's it's like oh it's slightly off so like you you move it down or whatever and then like oh that's not enough so you would like scale and then like you know you you eventually you'd say fuck it and you would have overlapping like this and have z fighting on the corners and then you would just like fuck it i'm just going to lower it a bit to remove the z fighting you know but let's say if, if it was an if it was an instance that you didn't want to lower it and you didn't want to have this very tiny lip here to remove the Z fighting, um, basically it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's literally just usability. Um, but let's say you wanted to actually snap this cube in the middle to be perfect. Well, Blender has some really great snapping tools to where you can snap, you can scale snap to vertices. So basically you can take this center dot face. So what's happening here is when I click this dot here, it starts scaling off the opposite face. So if I click here, you can see the opposite face isn't moving. Uh, there's a few benefits to that, which basically it basically allows you to like freely position things without having to like worry about like you can kind. Of, I guess you can kind of visually see it when I scale something like this compared to when I scale something like this. Um, so basically, what you do is you come here and you scale and you snap to that corner. As you can see, when I use the snapping tool, I can snap to that vertice here, which is flush on this face, and then do the same over here. And then now, it's perfect. You can see here it's, it's, oh wait, hold on, it's not flush on the top. It's not uh, tall enough. There we go. Now, if you look at it, it's perfectly flush. It's flush here. Uh, it's flush here, and it, it's per basically that's this workflow of like. You know, creating things and snapping like this and then like scaling and then uh, like, you know, like this kind of like approach that I'm doing here is like really fast. And I mean, you know, compared to what Halo is, like Forge is great. It's just, it's really not, you know, it's like, it's just slow and not fun for me at least. And that's what kind of drove me into doing this. Uh, this whole, actually, this whole thing started because of this other dumbass video. Oh, let me open it up. I made a video... Probably, um, uh, was it probably like two months ago or something at this point? Uh, August 20th, I made a video of how to, um, how to fix mouse input on, uh, Infinite because there's some like dog shit, like the, the way keyboard and mouse support is dog shit. If you're playing on console with a controller and you're content with that, you'll probably be, this, this tool is probably like, why the fuck do I need this? But if you're forging on PC and you already have like some Blender experience or like an interest in like modding or game development or in general, I feel like you're going to love this because it allows you to like use the tool that you're already familiar with to like block out and make levels. Oh, you saw this. Yeah. Okay. Well then if you've already saw this, then you probably know where my frustration comes in. Ugh. What I really hope, because I, I briefly looked into the Master Chief mod tools, like for Reach and 3, and I hope sometime in the future they add that for Infinite. Like, give us actual mod tools, like the Master Chief collection. Like, that would be, that's my dream. It is a, a, I would put money on it. It might not happen day one, but they will absolutely, I, even if, so if no one, let's say like everyone on the fucking planet decides, fuck the MVAR injection bullshit, I'll spend the time doing it and figuring it out. So it will happen. It might not happen day one or week one, but it will fucking happen. I will dedicate my entire fucking existence to fixing it. Because I have put too much time into this 
fucking blender tool to not have it work. You know, like it's just, oh. My only thing is someone that doesn't know blender is that. The, so the problem is, is that the, the because of how, so for what I've just done, uh, this isn't exactly how would, you would use the tool. But the reason it's difficult for a new person, well, I think it'd be difficult for a new person that has never used Blender, is because if you watch a video on Blender, so there's like two modes. So like you can like there's like the object placement mode that we're in now, and then there's the edit mode that allows you to come in here and actually edit the vertices and like the faces and shit and like you know, like do loop cuts like this and scale it and make like different, you know, actually model like a, in a more traditional way. The only thing is that this, this way of like modeling is not supported because we're not actually exporting mesh data into, uh, the, uh, into Forge. What we're, all that, all that's being read is the scale, the rotation, the position and the object ID down here that's currently not set on this object because this isn't a valid Forge item. I could actually, I'll actually, I'll, I'll open the asset browser. So we, ooh, oops. I'll make another tab so we can actually see that. So basically, Blender is just reading that data and exporting it out to another tool that then converts it into the map. So the, when someone that was learning Blender would watch a video and be like, oh, you know, my instinct to like scale this thing or make it larger on this axis might be to scale it this way, or they might do this instead. They might come into this, go edit mode, select this face, and then move it this direction. Both look visually the same, except that this orange pivot point is now offset from where it was before. So as you can see, the pivot point, that orange dot was in the middle, but if you go into edit mode and you move the face like this, the pivot doesn't move, unlike when you do this. When you scale outside of edit mode, the pivot moves. And that's one of the gotchas with the tool that, you know, you might accidentally go into edit mode and like instinctively do this or you know, do this and like scale it. And then you're like, why is my object inside of Halo look scuffed? And again, thank you. Thank you, Thomas, for the, the Twitch Prime. Uh, the, the Twitch Prime. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm all over the place right now. And it's only going to get worse. Tomorrow is going to be a fucking nightmare. But right now, like this is, um, these are the current items I have imported. So you see when I like load them in, I have like the IDs already set up down here. Uh, eventually, this won't be visible to people. But yeah, imagine, yeah, the mesh, I, I wish it was supported, though. The mesh data, I wish. I want, I basically just want this game to be sandbox, and that's unreasonable, because, like, they, it was never their goal to be sandbox. Don't, I'm not going to explain what sandbox is, just if you want to know what sandbox is, go look up S ampersand box, or look up sandbox face punch, and you'll, you'll find a video talking about it. It's Gary's Mod 2. But, yeah. There's, there's some like weird, like, like weird way. Basically this requires you to work in a weird way in Blender because you can't mo modify. You're basically using Blender as a placement tool. Instead of like a modeling tool. But I eventually plan on supporting more of like the, the cool like Blender things. Like I wanted to get geometry nodes like working with this. It's going to take a little bit more effort. And I also wanted to get like normal modifiers working. Like find a way to get it to where you can like you know, come over here and like make it like an array modifier and like duplicate, like make like 10 cubes and like space them or whatever like this and like make this kind of thing. Like you see how fast that was to make 34 cubes. You know, if you wanted to make 34 cubes in a line like that and, and like retail or normal uh, hordes, that would have took you like, God, I don't even know how long. You'd have to like create one, duplicate, and copy, uh, select, copy, select, copy, and so on and so forth. What's the biggest goal you have for forging right now? In terms of creations okay so i have oh god i have two things that i've been meaning to work on i was going to recreate among us because well i was kind of bullied into it and i kind of like i was at first i was like this is fucking dumb and then i kind of was like this is sick but then i started um and then as like a as a test while making this tool i made uh uh i made this um this map, I recreated a scent from Valorant. I blocked it out yesterday, not yesterday, last stream. Let me go find the, uh, let me go find it. In the last stream I did, I blocked it out as like a, as like a test 
to like kind of get more familiar with the tool. And I blocked out all of Ascent in like seven, I think it was kind of like six or seven hours. It was this VOD. Uh, I think this is public. So my my goal with this is like, depending on what happens tomorrow, I wanted to start recreating a tactical shooter like like game mode for Halo, like fully recreate like what CS and Valorant is, but inside of uh, inside of Infinite. So like have gun economy, have uh, you know slower speed, like lower jump height, lower speed, higher time to kill type shit. Is this one to one? Yes, actually, I'll. I'll I'll load this up. I'll load it up. I'll kind of show, just because like, I haven't really showed the tool off much besides like in the two videos I've done. I'll I'll show this. So if we open a scent. All right. So here's the block out that I did. Of the map, I don't think it's perfect. There's probably some cleanup I need to do. It's, it is mostly is more or less one to one. So here's like the, inside of Halo they have this like scale item. Oh, I missed a spot there. Uh, oops. Uh, this is the scale height. So this is rough. I haven't, I didn't, I didn't like do the math to get it perfect. I eyeballed it. Um. So this is like, oh, I didn't add that in there either. There's, there's supposed to be a box there. Um, oops, whatever. Um, it's almost done. Okay. I missed a few things. Um. But like this is more or less more or less the correct height for Valorant. Maybe he's a little short. Maybe he's a little tall. It's close enough. It feels right. So basically, I just took all I so the workflow that I did. Actually, I'll give a, a kind of example of like the workflow I did to create this. So there was this tool that already existed to import Valorant or Valorant maps into Blender. Thank fucking God. And all I did to actually create this was to create the block out. Is I had the primitives here on the left. And all I really did is came around and like dropped primitive down. Like here's a primitive on the floor on this. And then I used the snapping tools up here, the vertex snap with the scale enabled. And I basically came in here and like snapped them to faces like this. Well, if you click the right dot, you have to click the center dot for, I'm not going to explain why, but it's a pain in the ass. Click the center dot and snap and then snap and then snap. And you can kind of get the workflow from here on, like how this works. And then you do the same thing like for the floor, you know, you'd like, you know, like, snap it up to the floor and then scale it to the side and like so on and so forth. You continue what I'm doing now to make the whole thing. Um, and the reason it's one, I guess the answer, yes, it is one-to-one -one because I ripped, because the map is ripped from, uh, from, uh, from Valorant. So the scale might not be exact. So I might be like, maybe like, um, the, like I said before, the player height over here, it might not be exact. Like it might be, he might be slightly too tall. But the fix to that, which is easy, is I could just select all of this and scale it up or down to like adjust it later if it's not exact. So like once I'm done, I can scale all the objects to be the right size. Um, this uh, had a lot of, again, depending on the size of recreating Apex maps, if there's an Apex map importing thing, which what Apex is source. So like that actually might, well, I think it's source, right? It shouldn't be that hard. Um. So, it's just the problem is right now, because uh, Unique said prefab scaling. Uh, the only thing is, is now I don't currently support loading things into Blender. I'm working on it, but it's a, it's a pain in the ass. But basically, once you've like blocked out the map with the items on the left here and scaled everything correctly and did not apply rotation or position or anything, if you use Blender, you might be like, hey, I need to apply the rotation and scale or whatever. You fucking don't ever in this. You go file, export, the forge data... And then you save it somewhere. And then you open up the other tool, which I don't actually, I'm going to just download it from GitHub because I don't know where I saved it. <laughs> uh, and then you, you know, run the tool, uh, run the other tool. So this is two parts. Te this doesn't need to be two parts. It can, I can technically probably do all of this in Python and Blender, but f fuck no. Okay. I'm not getting into that again. So, so there's this other side tool that I've, where most of the works actually went into. And if you, if I extract this and you open it, 
there's a little uh, forge for blender mvar maker dot e whatever you open this and it's this really ugly looking program if it ever opens hello thank you it's really ugly uh but it's uh it's my ugly so you set the save location to wherever the fuck you want it to be output uh which in my case i'm going to set it to the save location of the game rtx new variant save and then I'm going to hit the Create MVAR button, and it's going to ask you to point to the data that we just exported from Blender. So we wouldn't file export uh, forge data. It's asking us to save a file, and it's defaulted to a sent.dcjson, and I'm saving it to my the Z drive. And it's what it, what you do now is you point to that. So you go to your Z, and then you see there's a sent.dcjson, and you hit Open. And then here in the console, I'm going to there needs to be some work here. Um, uh, it said it saved to the variant, so. If you if you've not used the insider build the, the insider build the uh, the leaked build insider bullshit, uh, the game loads a map called test.mvar, which is what we've just saved out. So if I go and open Halo right now, it, this map should just load up on the map. I did choose the right map here in the settings. Catalyst, yes, it should load up on Catalyst. Which I'll, I guess I'll do that real quick, just to show that it works. And like this is, I'm gonna. There's some things that I can do to speed this up, and this is probably gonna change a lot when Forge comes out for real because the way we load maps is probably gonna change. So I don't. I'm not gonna like. I'm not making these changes until after Halo actually like comes out. I'm not gonna like try to like automate stuff until I know it work. It's, everything's working. Oh God. Everything's dying. Halo crashed. Hello? Send the doctor. Uh, what do I have open? What needs to be closed? I've got too much open. Hold on. Let me do some like maintenance. I currently have... Uh, oh, what, what is that open? Why is that open? Why is that open? And that can be closed. That can be closed. Uh, that should be enough. I, I got too much stuff open. All right. This... Oh, no, don't open retail. What am I doing? Am I brain damaged? Recreate breakout. Well, the thing, I, I, what I might do is just start blocking out a bunch of maps and just, like, putting them up on my file. Just because I feel like I can block out faster with the tool than, like, you know, like since I'm, like... I don't know. Someone might be able to use the tool and block out faster than me, but like if they're not using the tool, it's like I feel like I win that race. Even being like an idiot and not really being that good at Blender. Oh, come on, game. Let me in. Oh, okay, here. I'm just going to restart everything again. The the joys of playing the early leaked build thing of Halo. I cannot wait till I don't have to do this anymore. It just works, and it's just going to load. Well, at least I hope it just works. You know, it, there's nothing saying that this launch doesn't just kill the game for like a week. That would just be the icing on the cake. We had to wait a whole last year for uh, Forge, and then we the whole game goes, out, goes like to shit for like a few days because like Forge breaks the game. Oh, come on, let me in. And so the now all we do is this is going to probably change when it comes out. You're just like, definitely going to change. So I'm going to load the map up. None of this is actually relevant because it's just some like side bullshit because of the leak. Being optimistic is delayed by one hour. Yeah, probably. But now that we load the map, you're going to see that. I guess, I guess you, I guess technically I didn't show the entire step. You'd be like, well, Technically, you didn't show the creation of the map or whatever. Well, I mean, if you come over here and look, like that's the that's the map. So, like, there we go. So, the the person said before about being able to select stuff and move them as a group in Halo or in Halo. So basically, you control drag, and you could only the thing at the bottom is how many items you can have selected. So you can only select 150 items at a time. But if you hit Control G, you can group them into a prefab. Or if you hold the E key or whatever, you can create add to a prefab here. It's the same thing. So you can like group everything like this and then move everything as one. So like here, here's the map. And currently I can't get out there because it's on the wrong side of the map. But like, you know, 
I'll, I'll kind of like show it here. Like this is like, I can't go any further, but like this is like, if you've played Valorant, you know that this is like really close to scale. You know, like, it's not perfect. I don't think it's exactly perfect, but it's good enough. A hotkey cheat sheet, yeah. If I ungroup this, and I try to snap over here, normally you can kind of, like, force yourself out if you're, like, far enough. I've been able to, like, snap myself, like, out. But normally what you do is you go to the special spot where Unique makes all his maps at and you stop being unreasonable and you scale it in the Y by like what negative like 1500. Oh, this. Oh, my God. Unique, do you get this? Will your whole ass game freezes when you move everything back? <laughs> oh, God. I thought my game was actually going to crash, but it recovered. So like here we are. So like here's the this is a CT spawn. Obviously some things I fucked up in Blender. If we open up Blender real quick, you'll actually see that I that's not an error with the program. That's an error with my modeling in Blender. So you can see it's actually like fucked up one to one. Like that cube isn't right because I'm an idiot. It, it yeah okay. And then you can see here like the size. It feels obviously in Valorant you can't fucking move this fast. Not even Neon with her ult and shit. Like oh there's a fuck up there as well. But, like, if you come over here to, like, you know, fucking B main and you chill, it's like, you can see, like, we're the same height. Well, you're, you're actually, I think your camera's, like, in your chin in this game. But, like, if you've played Violent, you can, like, the feel of, like, the game, it, it's very close. Like, it feels good. Like, the scale, at least. I think it may be, I don't know. I just, like, eyeball it, so... So obviously I need to like decrease jump height and like if there's a way to disable like climbing, hopefully that's a, I forget if that's a thing in node graph. But like, you know, I'm going to like get some like invisible blocks and shit. There aren't, wait, there are invisible blockers in this game, right? I've not actually forged in a minute. I've done nothing but blender shit. I forget what items are actually in this fucking game. But you can see it's, it's like, it's reasonable. It took like six or seven hours or something. Okay, yeah. All what I said you can't. Okay, good. Okay. But yeah, like the movement speed needs to be like reduced by half and like jump height needs to be lowered and we turn off clamber and disable sprint and we have our own little uh, thingy. It can be done in the game type settings. Okay, yeah. I'm pretty sure there's also the ability to do it inside the node graph, I thought. Well, there's climber speed. Whatever. It does. It, it, it'd probably be done in game mode. So, you know, that's that's kind of like the the workflow of it. I mean, to kind of be getting to end. Oh, whatever. Wait, did I miss it? Am I blind? Am I blind? I'm. Oh, climber enabled. I see it. Yeah, I'm blind. Let's go. But yeah, can do it there. Yeah, I, yeah. In the FAQ, they talked about that, which is big. Is there a way to make items invisible? I don't think there is, but there is. Uh, it's gotta be in gameplay blockers. Primitive. What are block? What are the blockers under? <laughs> Structure block. Oh, uh, yeah, it's it's on the same release. It's on the same page. So everything you need is on that release page of... Uh, hold on, I'll go to it real quick. Um, Everything you need... So if, if I guess if you're ever confused, so you come over to... You go to the page and then click the releases here, and then it should show you every all the different releases here. And then you basically, inside of these assets, there's the blender add-on.zip, and the Forge for Blender Maker zip. So inside the Blender add-on zip, uh, 
technically so if you've actually shit i need to change that because the blender add-on um normally with blender add-ons you actually install them as a zip so maybe that's a maybe that's a bit of bad form and i should separate the blend this blend file out it's basically this is the this is the assets here so what you do is you drag this to a folder somewhere and then go into blender's preferences and the file paths down here and you make a new library that points to the folder that you put that in and name it whatever you want i'd name mine forge assets and then here on the left with the drop down you'll see uh you might have to hit the refresh button but if you go to the like by default it's going to say user library or whatever and then you can just hit the drop down for forge assets and then from here you can just you know do the thing i talked about drag out and scale and the the tool you want is actually to be able to access the little box tool here it's under if you hold left click on the the scale tool on the left uh, I forget if it's if this is hidden. I forget how to show it. Actually, no, the little dot here. Yeah, if that's hidden, the little dot here in the top left, and then you hold left click on this and go to scale cage. So then you can then do this, and then also you can enable snapping at the top. Uh, vertex, edge, and face project is what I normally keep on, and then make sure that move, rotate, and scale is checked with closest snap. So like basically everything that's blue up at the, the scaling at the top, and then you can just like, you know, snap to like vertices and shit and. It might take some uh, getting used to, and you might have to, like, it, I, I recommend going watching a, a Blender Snap video, like, talking about the, the snapping tools in Blender. Maybe it would make a bit more sense. Um, yeah. It's not... It, also, ignore the monkey head. The monkey head needs to be removed. If you want to change the map that your shit is on, it's in the it's in your scene properties here like the little like triangle with the two circles down here there's the forge map settings there's catalyst and all the maps i'm going to add the um once tomorrow comes out once tomorrow comes out once the game comes out tomorrow i'm going to get all the ids and put them in here technically i think serasia already technically like have those or somebody already has those ids but i'll put them all here tomorrow i'll update it tomorrow so that they're all here So yeah, you change your ID here. Don't spawn in the monkey head. Monkey head is going to be deleted the next release. It's. I need to make a video showing this off. But if you have issues, like just I'll, I'll 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 open the Blender again and show it. And then obviously, like if you haven't used Blender before, like you know, getting used to like the normal movement, moving things and whatever, and like the general like placement of things and the 3D cursor and. All right, so what was I going to do before I went on this huge ass, like, showing this off thing? Oh, yeah, I was importing items. That's right. Okay, so I guess I'm going to sit here and just, like, where's the, where's the most photogenic spot of the map? Technically, the sun actually needs to be rotated, like, like, 45? No, no, not, no, 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 pitch, 40... Needs to be like, uh, I think the shadows in Ascent are this direction. I think this is the Ascent shadows in Valorant. Because I'm pretty sure this box here has shadows behind it in the actual game. Obviously, I'm going to have to get the, you have to, since, see, the problem is, is, um, because, um, I, I'll say this before I go, uh, and grab a drink. Because we currently don't support in Blender the ability to set materials, you're going to be like, oh shit, you might want to start setting, you might like load the game up to test it and like set materials. But obviously with no way of importing uh, the material, importing into Blender and whatever and it not supporting materials, like it wouldn't work. Basically you have to wait, you have to, right now just use this tool as strictly a blockout tool. And once you start to like doing the other stuff, you can never go back into it unless... The alternative would be to save everything else as a prefab and then load it up on the map and like save it as an offset. So what you could do is let's say like you were like foraging on this map or whatever, like tomorrow, and you had like a you had like a like a bunch of like visual effect like visual pretend this is like something pretty. And it's like in this position or whatever. You could like make a prefab of all the pretty items, group them together and prefab them, save them, and then like position them back to the right position or whatever.
Oh, what is what is that? What is this? Is it by Josh? Oh, is it me talking again? Oh, that's okay. That's when I was having yeah, I was having a stroke. Yeah, okay. I already know what happened. I'm gonna go get a drink before my throat decides to like fail on me because I'm gonna be talking a lot tomorrow. I should honestly have not streamed today and only stream tomorrow because I'm I have talked too much and I should like slow down and talk a little softer because I need my voice tomorrow. <laughs> uh, I'll be right back.
Okay, there's spaghetti. Spaghetti, spaghetti, spaghetti. So what time do I need to go to bed to wake up at like 12? So I definitely think I'm gonna go to bed really early because I don't want to miss uh, the content. Even though it's probably, it might get delayed. By an hour or two. Like, I'm not sure how prefabs were in Halo 5, but if, prefab, uh, if prefabs were like shareable on your file share in Halo 5, then yes. I'm going to be, tomorrow I'm going to be making a whole bunch of node graph scripts, turning them into prefabs and putting them on my file share for anyone to use. I'm also going to try to like explain them as I make them so that someone that might, that some, some the newer people to know graph can uh, hopefully try to learn something, maybe. I don't expect to get a lot done because I assume that I'm going to get like sidetracked a lot off questions and stuff, but. Yeah, like the, yeah, exactly. I'm probably going to start simple on some easy easy to make stuff like uh like maybe like a door like I'll, I'll start with the door and show that off. And um you no, know, so and so, you know. Um, I might also spend some time looking in if if it's not easy to import. Well, I might spend probably the first like little bit of the stream figuring out how to port items, uh, how to get the maps from the leak build to Halo Infinite, and do the brief like looking through and see. And then after that, I'll probably just like wait for like Serasia or some other like dude to be like, "Hey, here's the fix." And I'd be like, "Okay." All right, so, um, oh yeah, I was importing, um, I guess we'll close Halo for now, because I'm importing all the items in a blender. All right, let's make a little script for, um, let's make a new, how did I save that? Let's make a, I need to point to the folder where this is at. Z, hello, for object board data here.
So we take all. I need. I'm trying to make this uh, as easily cons easy to consume in Python as possible. You're going to notice that most of the things I do are to avoid writing as uh, as uh, to uh, avoid writing Python as much as possible. Yeah, well, um, I'll go, I'll, I'll go over all this stuff, um, tomorrow. Right now, I'm trying to see if how much I can get done of the forge tool, because probably for the next few days, I'm not going to touch this. All right. All right. So, thank you, Unique. Uh, we go um folder. I have the folder of all the object data. So I need to get There's more I need to do. I don't have everything. There is something that I'm missing. The file path, the first file path. So we're back over here in uh headache land and we need starting at the beginning. So we already have so when I run this, down here at the bottom, you can see that there is a a string table. In this string table, if I dump it and we look, it's basically just a big long list of a bunch of strings, and these are like relative file paths to um, the unpack in in, in the unpack from the level folder. And they're separated by these double zeros. I don't know what fo uh, format that actually is. There's zero zero. I mean. Yeah, it's uh I need to I need I was gonna find a better one. I don't know if there's like a, actually a dark theme in this bitch. I haven't tried. I really wish there was a dark theme. I don't know how to do it in this fucking thing, but it'd make it easier to look at, but yeah, hex editors have been uh I don't know any good ones, because I don't really do this kind of shit. But I've been like, uh, so we start here, and we need to find uh, primitives. So it's just zero zero by uh, so it's literally zero zero. They're separated by zeros. Well, zero zero in hacks. Zero and error hex just equivalent to zero, you know. So, if I'm not mistaken, this first entry should be the one we want. Because we don't care, all the others down here, so if we look at this, if we go to the next uh, next dot, this is for the primitive block 8x8x8, eight by eight by eight, and that's for uh, that's for dynamic objects, which I'm not dealing with right now. I will eventually, maybe. Uh, that's going to require some uh, some blender finagling. Oh, okay. How much? How much did you lose, or did you get it back?
fifty thousand. Wait, so fifty thousand dollars in Doge, or fifty thousand Doge? Bro, I, I, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I think Doge is like 12 cents right now. Eleven cents right now. Bro. That is the fucking worst. I mean, shit, this isn't even the highest it was. If you would have sold it as peak, wasn't it like close to like 50 cents like a bit ago? <laughs> like last year? Past like five years? Yeah, it was 60 something cents at its peak. You could have oh. Damn, man. You spent two weeks on it. Oh. I mean, have you considered, like, do you, I don't know if you still have the drive or not. I mean, I don't know, you, with how much money was on it, I mean, you, I don't know if you've ever considered, like, sending it to a, uh, a person, even though, even though, like, you might have been able to do it yourself, maybe, like, they'll, they get, like, more lucky. You know, someone else, like a, like a third party, might have a better shot at, like, actually finding it, not, uh. Because, I mean, even if I spent, like, two weeks on it, but, bro, I still, I'd probably still pay, like, some money to a dude to be like, hey, listen. Well, I'm, well, I'm eating, sorry. Um, fuck. I, I would explain it, but I don't entirely understand it enough to explain it in a way that is explainable. Um, the, 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 the five-year-old explanation is computers work hard, work hard. Basically, computers, like, work really hard to, sol to solve, like, a really a hard math problem. And the first person to, the first person to solve really hard math problems gets paid or something like that. That's that's really gr that's a gross simplification of it, but it's I think close enough. First person to solve really hard math gets paid, and it's 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 kind of like like you know it's I don't know that's about a, that's my my understanding of it. This is too fucking complicated, man. I, I didn't really look into it because I didn't really care too much about the technology itself. Especially after everyone's been trying to force it down my throat. Like, fuck this bullshit. All right, let's close all this. So what we're do- How? Uh, what we're doing is we're trying to get the first- Actually, this should be easy. We come over here. And we need to get the, um, um, shit. Base streamed up position. Well, you, you could have been, like, even now, okay, one, even now, it would be, like, it would have been close to, like, half a million. Uh, It was, like, 5x the price at peak. That would have been 2 million. Oh, God. I would have. Oh, my God. 
three wait three bitcoin back in 2014 that would have that's like you saw that should have peaked that would have been like a, almost 200 grand Shit, like, <laughs> imagine how many monitors you could have got with that. That's like house, that's like nice house money. Buy a whole ass house. Or you get a pretty decent, pretty decent chunk towards the house. If you didn't want to spend it all on that, like, fuck. You know, Green Git was Doge. So he right now, if uh, if he had if if he had it in his hand right now, fifty thousand Doge times uh, times zero point zero one. You know, that's a penny times ten cents. Wait, am I reading that right? I'm having a stroke. Did I do my math wrong? I'm having a stroke. Am I doing it backwards? I don't know. You would have had a lot, all right? Multiply. Am I not multiplying? I thought I was multiplying. I don't know what I'm clicking. I'm like the fucking distractor, okay? I'm like trying to do like, I'm trying to eat and like work on this and like, I don't know. You would've, he would have been like, well, big, some big money at peak. Oh, it feels bad though. I mean, technically, I lost I lost some Doge back in the day because I actually briefly mined it as well, way back. It wasn't that much though. It was maybe at the time thirty or forty dollars worth, which wouldn't have been that much today. That would have been like at most a thousand dollars, I think, today, or a few thousand. Like not enough to be like oh like. Hold on, let me get a bite array. Bite array, bite array, bite array, bite array, bite array, bite. Bite array. I need to go, um, what's the, okay, what's the easiest, uh, what's the easiest, uh, what's the shortest hand for, uh, I need to figure this out. What's the cleanest way to get the first occurrence of, uh, like a number in a byte array? There's, there's some, like, link shit you can do. Unfortunate. Bro. I just, my only, my only, uh, like, I, it's not that I'm against crypto. It's just my only, uh, my only concern about it is that unlike this is the benefit and a detriment to the currency because it's not centralized transactions are final and 
if you lose money in the case like what happened here, you have no recourse at all. Zero. There's nothing you can do. If someone steals your money or steals, steals crypto from you, I mean, I guess you could like in, inform the authorities and they could attempt to investigate it or you could like hire people to try to like figure it out and like charge the guy outside of, you know, get it back outside of crypto. But like, good luck. Like that's a whole, like that's, I'd imagine that that's only the case in super high profile thing. When someone steals like millions and millions and millions and millions and hundreds of millions of dollars. Maybe then the people, they actually enough people would come after them and they might find them. But like in the case of like this, it's like, this isn't like, this is like kind of like small chain compared to that big shit. And it's like, you, you're just like fucked. And if this would have happened with your actual bank account, if this show was in your bank, like it's a lot easier to like hey, talk to someone like, hey, listen. Help me. And that's my only like thing about it. No, well, I'm still eating, so it's not a big deal. It's the only it's like the one like the big downside of it. Oh yeah. Um oh, let's just let's do this so I can go. Can I go first? Oh, you can. Returns the first element. Can I first with... No, that's a link. Uh, a link hurts my head. Returns the first element. No, I don't want the first element to sequence. I want... Does contains return? No, it doesn't tell me which. Okay, I'm just gonna fucking. I hate this, but like, there's there's a shorthand for this. I know it. I fucking know it. There's a shorthand for this. Well, yeah, well, that's, that's my take on it as well. Is like the, the, most of the upsides do outweigh uh, the downside. It's just one of those things that This is one of those instances of a uh, that two liter effect. No, oh god, <laughs> oh god. Uh so we're gonna loop over this. We're gonna look for string table i is equal to zero. If and then I'm gonna break here if it's if we hit it. We did hit it. What index? 83. Does that sound about right? 83 bytes after the first? From here to here? God damn it, it's giving me the length in hex. Fuck. What's 50, 54 to hex? 54 and a hex is 84. Okay, see, like, this is where, like, people, like, would...
This is like what people that like do this often would like, bro, like the 54, uh, 80, uh, 54 and hex. Oh, that's 84. You know, it's like, bro, I don't like, I imagine there's people that can actually just like make the, like, you know, like they can do it, but like fucking hell, man. Like just tell me the length in decimal because I feel like that's more like, fuck. I wish there was a way to change that. But specifically how I'm working with it. That was 84, right? Well, 83. It's going, I'm 84 because I'm, uh, got the dot. You've messed up so many times because, yeah, bro, the, the stu, hex is like a different way of counting. Here's like the, like, like one, like, so here, actually I'll give you an example and why this is, it, why it's weird. And I can't explain why it's fucking used because I don't quite understand it. But like one, one in decimal is one in hex. Two in decimal is also two in hex. Three and three and four and five and six and seven and eight and nine. They all line up, but once you go to 10, hex turns into A. And then 11, it will be B. And then 12 will be C. So you get the idea, 13 D, 14 E. So like, there's like, there's like some like logic to it, but it's just like, sometimes when you're reading a number, because like, like the number like 84, in dec the number number 84 in decimal is just 54 in hex. So it doesn't look like a hex. It doesn't look like it's in hex. It just looks like a normal fucking like decimal number. So like... I mean, it does have in parentheses uh, H here, which I assume is hex. <laughs> uh, but still, like, fuck off. Like, I hate it. It's like there's there's a reason for it. I don't. I, I couldn't tell you like the reason why exactly. Yeah, base sixteen. Yeah. There's probably like there's like some optimization. I don't know why it's like displayed this way. Like maybe it's like a, maybe easily visualization. I don't think there's anything with optimization actually. This is some way of visualizing the shit. Or maybe there's I don't know. I don't. I don't know why. I couldn't tell you the reason. I just know what it's a thing. I haven't bothered looking into the history and why hex became like a way of displaying like binary data i mean probably because it's easier to display this instead of like the binary and maybe also the decimal of it i don't i couldn't tell you i could not tell you there's probably some good reason for it but i don't care it's just a thing you gotta know it's because 16 is an uh Better number for literally everything. 16 fits into base 2 better. Okay, true. Slightly learning, yeah. That sounds about right. 16 fits into base 2 better. I, 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 I'll, I'll give that one. Okay. I'm using system collections. Like, why? Do, okay.
like I I would probably like be able to if I like worked in it more and like put effort into it, but like this is not what So would it be can I just bit convert this shit? What's the easiest way to starless to string? Oh yeah, new string. I did this before. Yeah, I literally did this before. Yeah. Um Easy. So then after this, we go static model path is equal to new string of static model path dot to array. Oh, no, no, static object chars. Almost done with the concoction. <laughs> You're like so funny. Yeah, I will. Still, so, uh, so guys, uh, yeah, well, it's, uh, fucking. I want to. I just want to do the art guy stuff. I want to do. I want to do the Houdini shit. I don't know if you were here when we were talking about Houdini, unique, but it's like this really cool. Uh, um. Go look at Houdini, the Houdini engine video again. Uh, this was this is something that I'm actually interested in, even though like. I don't know how to uh, I don't know how to I can't find the video, but basically it's this way of like procedurally modeling. Like you probably I don't know if you have like like I don't know if you know much of CAD software, but. It's basically this way of like using nodes in a system kind of like how Unreal has, uh, sorry, that Unity has, not Unity, sorry, Halo has. And it's a way of like allowing you to like procedurally, like you can see here, like what he's doing. He's basically like changing like properties here in Unreal. So he's in Unreal here and he's like changing stuff on the right that causes the Houdini like asset to regenerate. You see he hit a button and like geometry like pops around the corner and shit. Like he has like, hit like, had, like a border and shit. And then he also like did a thing here to where he like caused it to rotate and shit like, and like this is what I want to do. Like he literally clicked enable bend and then set like a rotation, and that was like bending. And like you can do this shit to like pr uh, procedurally like create like almost fucking anything. Like if you go uh, if you like go hard enough, like you see here, like uh, actually he does it with this tree. This is one of the like the most simple explanations. So he has these trees here that he made in Houdini, that he imported the Houdini asset into Unreal. And you're going to notice here, there's like these little dots, these little like dots on this line and the tree is following these dots, but these dots are actually editable on Unreal so he can move them on Unreal and the tree regenerates to follow the curve that he's making with these dots. It's so fucking cool. And that's what I want to really be doing. Um, but like I'm over here in like this like fucked up like Halo land or whatever. I'm still having fun, but like this is like, like this shit's so fucking cool. So like you can see here, he's actually doing it. Uh, he's actually making like a row of trees. So like each one of these little white things, he's gonna like spawn a tree on each one of these dots. So he's like, he created like a curve to put trees on or whatever. And it's like, he like goes over like the whole, like how the program works. It's like, it's really like technical. It's like, it's like a more like, it's like art and like programming kind of combined because it's a very like programmy like workflow or kind of like CAD in a way. And it's like, this is like, this is what I want to do. So it's like, I want to do like arts, like the more like creative stuff, but I want to like, I want to, uh, um, you know, do, do the more like tactical art side of things. But the, I should have the static model path now, right? I did that.
No, I no, I definitely will. I definitely will when now that Forge is actually gonna be out. Could that be done in Blender at Infinite? That okay, so that specific uh thing that we were looking just looking at, I'll open it back up. Okay, I don't know which tab that was on, so I don't know how to open it back up. But yes, it can it can be done in Blender, but it can't be done in Halo directly. So Blender's alternative to that. So Blender, I forget which version they did this in. They added this geometry node system, which is basically very similar to how Houdini works. So like, this is like input geometry, this is output geometry, and you can like manipulate it in a very similar way that you can do it in Houdini. Um, if you learn like the, the Blender uh, geometry node stuff. And I actually plan on adding support uh, for Halo assets inside of the geometry nodes here. It's just, there's some like, it's just a little bit more complicated because of the way attributes in Blender work. And I, I can't explain it because I don't know enough of fucking about it to like, like, it, it's just, it's fucking complicated, but yeah. Yeah, so when the tool finished, you could do something similar. I've actually thought about because Blender pissed me off early on, just saying fuck this and doing everything in Houdini just because I, like, wanted, like, an excuse to use it. But, yeah, you can do similar things. So let's say you wanted to, like, you know, like, create, like, a like a scattering of... So let's... I guess one of the examples you could use the geometry nodes for. Let's say you had, like, you know, like a... Like, let's say here... Actually, here's an example. We'll go, like, mid here. And let's say you wanted to, like, scatter a bunch of rocks around. Like, you know, pretend these are rocks. Like, a rock here, and a rock there, and a rock here, or whatever. You want to do it randomly, but you also wanted to, like, place it so that it's not, like, inside of a rock. So, like, let's say, like, obviously, placing uh, blocks within this range randomly, is, that's not really that hard. You can do it. I don't know if there's a built-in Blender add-on, but what can happen is, is that... Some blocks might find, or some uh, some rocks might find themselves inside of each other like this, and it's like you don't want that. You don't want like a the block to be overlapping. But inside the geometry node system, um, you can actually like set it up so that it will only spawn these rocks in areas a certain distance away from like the boundaries. So like it won't spawn rocks within like a range around a thing. So you can use it to, like quickly like you know scatter rocks and stuff around. It's I think it's less useful in Halo just because of the budget. Uh, like the the budget issues inside of Halo. Oh god damn it, Josh. But yeah, you can you can definitely do stuff like that. Um, it's just in the, this specific context of like forging in Blender, it's a little more niche. But there's definitely things that I that you can do that would be really cool that I want to try out. It's just I got to get to that point now, and that's like the least important feature that I would need. Like, out of all the features that I want to be done the most, I want that one to be done, but it's also the least important. Because it's like, who the fuck's going to do that? Who, besides me and maybe, like, a couple people, who cares about that? Most people would probably just want to benefit from foraging faster with the Blender tools and stuff. But, you know, um, I will start playing forward, uh, playing custom games. It's just, it's a pain in the ass having to, like, go through the hacky bullshit thing that we've been doing to, you know, that you, I've seen it. You guys going through the fucking Hamachi bullshit. It feels like hosting Minecraft servers like 10 years ago, you know, <laughs> like, oh God. We, I had, a, I have a group of friends that I still talk to. They used to host a TeamSpeak server on fucking Hamachi because they didn't know like how to like port forward or setting any of that shit up. So they Hamachi that bitch. And I was like, bro, what the fuck? And then I was like, guys, listen, you guys got to come join our TeamSpeak server because, like, <laughs> like, come on. And then, you know, that's how I met most of my friends today. Just because, like, this group of people that were, like, friends of friends were, like, using a dumbass, like, scuffed approach to TeamSpeak. I just miss, like, I don't think Tungle's around anymore. Like, didn't that shit die? Like, Tungle used to be, like, the alternative. Like, this shit, like, we used to use this for a while because it was, like, a little better to, like, get more people in because they had, like, big-ass lobbies for games and you could get, like, more people than you could in this, but I think they shut down or whatever.
But yeah. Because of some weird complications and because my the ISP that I've had for a while, um, uh, everyone by default is behind a carrier grade NAT, which people who know what that is know what it is. But if you don't, it basically means that your public IP, your public facing IP address isn't actually like unique. There are it means that multiple people on your ISP actually share that IP address, and that the difference is actually in the ports that are assigned instead of the actual IP. It's fucking weird. It's basically a way of like saving IP. It's basically a way for IP, uh, 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 ISPs to save, uh, to save money on, uh, IP addresses. And also just to save IP addresses in general. Well, it's just a pain in the ass is what it is. Because it basically, uh, uh, made it impossible to for forward the traditional way without like a, Basically, you either needed to use like Tungul or like a box outside, and but yeah, fucking carry grade Nats can go fuck themselves. Honestly, especially when you didn't know you were behind a carry grade Nat because you didn't know what that fucking was at the time. Well, I didn't know how to quote the fuck that was back in the day, and you're trying to host a Minecraft server, being like, "Why the fuck isn't it working?" Um, and then realizing that it's like, you know, oh, it's carry grade Nat. I learned, I literally learned about that probably like, I don't, I only, I only really learned like the implications of that, like fucking like probably like four years ago. And it explained everything. God, I hate games, man. I hate games like that. The fucking... Did you see Saucy's situation? He found a way to, uh... Did you see the Saucy situation said he found out that the leaked Forge maps won't have any ways to carry over? I doubt it. I... I don't know. I don't know him. I doubt... No, he's in my chat. Wait. Did he say it? I, what I doubt is impossible. He's actually in the chat. Wait. I doubt it's... I doubt... There's gotta be a way. Maybe not an official way. Like, 343 sanction, but there will be a way. Because I'm going to put an ungodly amount of time. Oh, you said that because Unique did it. I uh, did. No, there'll be a way. There'll be a way. Okay, well, annoying. Okay, there's two chats going on here. So we're <laughs> a little confused. There'll be a way, trust me. Somebody will figure it out. Either Josh or Serasia or Zima. Some, so one of the game god gamers in the corner over there that like make all the cool shit, they'll figure it out. Or maybe it's easy and like, it'll just work. It, it won't be, it, trust me, it won't be a problem. If... I wouldn't still be working on this stupid fucking tool if I didn't believe it would be possible. But no, it, it's probably not going to be possible day one. I agree with that. Like, within the first day or the first week, it's probably not going to work. Okay, what was I doing? Oh yeah, yeah, I was checking this. The static model, there's the static, there's the relative static model model path. So I need to get the path. So let's create a little like data type here. Uh, public class. Uh, public int item ID. The issue to me is that this message works, then you could just use to bypass the read. Well, the thing is, is like the read write permission. Am I okay? This is my take. The read write permissions are fucking done in the first place. I feel like, like maybe it's cool, but like. They can't stop it regardless. There's, it's literally physically impossible to prevent that. You can just make it harder. But with the idea, like, with the game loading the map, 
and it being sent over the network. And if they're doing it the same way that they're doing it, like, like doing it now in retail, it's, it's not, you know, it's physically like not worth, like, it's like physically impossible unless they like go deeper and deeper. Like, obviously I guess they could like, you know, like add more like restrictions to it, but like with enough effort, it's going to, you know, it's not like this is like, it's not like they're like trans, they're like, uh, transmitting like fucking like credit card information or anything. I doubt they're, uh, being super crazy secure about it. But yeah, no, you're right. Because technically with this, this would allow someone else to re-upload the map. Well, even then, the game has to know how to read that. Well, that's the thing. It could be. They could use some form of encryption, but the game has to read it. How, how would the game know to display that? That key is going to be stored somewhere in the game. Maybe it's difficult to get it, but, like, the game has to read the data eventually. So somewhere in your game, it's going to get unencrypted. It's just a matter of time before somebody finds the key. And then at that point, it'd be a game of, like, it'd be like an arms race of, like, them changing the key and, you know, finding it again and whatever. It's... I don't, I don't think it's going to be an issue. But, yes, the read-write read write things suck. That's, oh, you're yeah, true. Well, the thing is, if this doesn't work, mine and Josh's efforts have been wasted for the past two months. At least two months. How long has it been? Three? Two? Well, no, the thing is, uh, so it's like, just over one or something. I don't know how long it's been, but like that's gonna suck if they like actively prevent this because they might not actively prevent it, but they might have like a like a something to stop it like initially or like something that you we have to like figure out. But if they keep actively doing it, which I guess if people keep take, uh, taking other people's maps and claiming it, there's the, claiming it's theirs, maybe then like they might do something and people bitch about it. But like I doubt it. Because at that point, it's like, it would be different. This is where, like, this is going to sound fucking maybe toxic. But if it was something other than just, like, a the, 343 has thrown around the, game, the term game engine a few times when referring to Forge, and it pisses me off because I feel like they're not entirely wrong but I feel like it's a little fucking naive to call this a fucking game engine when we have so many restrictions on what can still be done, even though the, we, the doors are wide open now. I, I just don't, I don't, I, I don't. I feel like using the word game engine without the ability to like use custom assets of your own, I feel like it's just like, it doesn't like what, have you ever heard of a game engine that doesn't allow you to like make assets outside the game engine? <laughs> Well, I read it. They said they 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 mentioned like it brief. They like, mentioned it briefly. But it's it's gonna it's gonna happen. I wouldn't worry about it. This is gonna be this isn't gonna be a problem. And if it's not, then I'm going to scream and kick at the top of my lungs until they fix it or stop actively stopping us from doing it. But I, my guess is because like everything else in this game, and if you've used the early build thing, you can see part of this. Um, uh, most, from what I can tell, which I don't know if I still have Fiddler, uh, my tool. So like most of the stuff here, I'm not going to click any of this because some of this is like sensitive, but most of the data in the menu in like the loading of maps I'm pretty sure is all over HTTPS 
uh, WSS. Is that WebSocket? Or is that Secure WebSocket? I don't know what WSS is, but, uh... Um, but basically, like, everything menu-wise is done over HTTPS, which makes me think that they're going to be using a very similar API call to send the maps to the server to your file share, which means if that's the case, all you need to do is basically just, like, see what's, what endpoints are called, fill in the data with the new data, and then boom. Oh God, John, no, don't say that. Um, no, that is, oh, I'm gonna fucking, don't even, don't say that. No auto hot key scripts, okay? No, no. But I believe there'll be a way through the, uh, through some, through one of the many different Halo API things, like the open Spartan stuff, looks like they've been doing some cool stuff, but. The map uploads are UDP. Fuck. Okay. Well, that would be that. Wait, are you sure? That seems. Wait, if it is UDP. Wait, no, wait, hold on. If that is true, if it actually is UDP. Weird. Well, it's also. Yo, it's not called a certain safe hack. Well, I. I that's how Halo 5 did it? Fuck. Um, let me think. It just seems weird that if it is actually UDP, maybe I would I would understand if it's TCP, but unless they're like they're doing like some custom like they have their own like error correcting bullshit built on top of a UDP connection. Um, I guess I could download the Halo, uh, Halo for Windows 10 and look, but I, I don't think it's going to be a problem. Somebody will figure it out. Well, hopefully just save it to the... Is there, let's see if I can get a Google search off this. Why can't I save my Halo maps locally? Uh-oh. Oh my god, the amount of cope from these people in these comments, that is cringe. Halo 5 is on PC, Josh. Uh, I don't know if you're uninformed or trolling, but it is. It came out in 2016. We'll forge in custom games, not the multiplayer campaign, just like forge in custom games. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's basically, it's Halo. It's just not the campaign or multiplayer, but it's got forge in uh, custom games. So like, Unless there isn't custom games, I'm misremembering. I could have swore I remember playing custom games with people on this shit. Which is why I'm searching to see if, like, saving maps locally. Because these people, these people look like they're talking about, is like a console thing, maybe? I don't... Fuck you, mouse. Stop dying. There are customs. Okay, that's what I thought. There's got to be a way.
see the one see see Josh you say that I wonder if we're going to be able to load up the leaked build since the the new files use the retail build I wonder if we're going to, be able to load up the leaked build and since you know like the main menu and stuff like auto updates to like the current stuff in the current uh, leaked build I wonder if we're going to be able to save and submit the map with the leaked build in a very similar way that we're doing it now if with some modifications I mean like instead of saving it to disk or whatever I wonder if then like you could change like the, who whoever did the modification to like save if they could change it to point to the server you know what I mean because right now it's just dumping to disk well I mean if that happens then you know sandbox is coming out in, in like within a year and that bells me out like You you just won't know what's because it's like I'm hoping I'm really hoping it's like another fiddler type rule or something easy like that. It probably fucking won't be. But like this fucking like, I guess what I was saying before and I didn't get to my get to my point. Oh, maybe, 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 um. My thing is, is that everybody wants to protect your math with DRM, and it's like, I think that's fucking cringe. Not that DRM crin is cringe or trying to protect your work is cringe, it's that, this, again, this is going to sound, this is going to sound a little fucked, but Halo, and this is what I was, I was getting to this point when they talk, threw in the word game engine a lot, that was, this, this, I was trying to get to this point when I mentioned that earlier. Because it's, they say the word game engine, but it's not. Because, like, I hate when they say it. Because, like, when you say game engine, I feel like there's, like, like, you, with a game engine, like, you actually own the shit you make in a game engine. And you, like, pay license, you, like, pay a license to, like, the game engine to, like, use it. Like, you know, Unity, like, after, you know, you pay a license after you make so much or whatever in Unreal, you, same thing, or... You know, it's like, the stuff you make is yours, but you might have to pay a license to the engine creators if you make over a certain amount of money. But, like, in Halo, like, you don't have the same kind of control that you do in actual game engines. And it's like, while Halo is, like, the closest to a game engine it's ever been, it's just, like, it's more like, like, a level, it's, a, it's more like the editor aspect of a game engine and not an actual game engine. Because, like, when you know, we say game engine, you talk about the whole ass package. Like, you talk about the editor and, like, you know, like, the, the stuff behind the scenes, like all the physics and stuff, all the, the different tooling that goes with it. And in my opinion, maybe I'll be completely fucking, maybe I'm way off here. I don't think you can make something complex enough, that enough that you would want to, like, super lock down your shit in Halo to the point that you would want, like, no one, to, you wouldn't want people to steal it. It's not like you're going to ever make money from it in the first place either. Like, they're not going to, like, like, it's not like they're ever going to, like, it's just, it's just one of the things that there's no money to be gained, and it's all an ego thing. And it's not like I won't, like, I, if I uploaded something that I made, it's not like if it was something that I specifically made, I wanted to lock it. I don't even think that's necessarily, like, a, a bad thing, but it's, like, if it's something that upsets, if, if that's something that's upsets you, then I feel like, because like, I'm not getting any more to this. It's, there's a lot to it. My, my, uh, oh, Discord message. Okay. Um 
Yeah, it's just there's. I guess my simple take with some like uh, some like, with like a huge caveat. That there's more to this opinion than just this. Uh, DRM is cringe. Specifically in Halo. <laughs> that's pretty uh, that's pretty good oh uh, shit Because it's not that, like, I guess the way to put it is, like, it's not that, like, keeping the stuff that you make, like, you know, because it's, like, the whole closed source or open source thing. It's not, like, keeping the stuff that you made closed source, like, if it's something that you make, like, a game or whatever. But I feel like if you make a game and you keep it closed, it's different than, like, making a map for a game or a mod for a game. And keeping it closed, like, that's a little cringe. Unless that game is specifically designed like a game engine. Like, I feel like in the case of Sandbox, I could maybe feel, because of how much control you have in Sandbox, I could understand why someone might want to keep some of their projects private. Because also, like, like in Gary's Mod, there's going to be, like, custom server code and stuff that people are, like, you know, that are going to happen for servers and stuff. Um. Oh my god, yeah, control has to work in holy shit. But yeah, it's, um, I don't know. Like, I get, I get why they wanted to have, they want to have it, but I'm probably not going to turn it on for most of the things on my file share. Maybe the only, because what, I, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to prefab all the core thing, all the core components of the things that I like make out and make those like freely available for anyone to use. And then like, maybe like the things that like, combined together to make my like specific stuff I might lock or I might not even do it at all it honestly just appeals how I feel and how the whole system feels like how the whole thing it works uh, or not mm. I need to stop talking so much my fucking throat I'm not gonna have a voice tomorrow I don't need file path. You're functioning te functioning textures. That's gonna be nice. We just need an object ID, object ID, and a file path. I think, right? Object ID and file path. Uh, Python. How do you? What's the easiest way to read a JSON file to a class? But yeah, I really hope they don't like lock it down too hard. Are there only ever two branches out of an action? What the fuck's an action node? Which one's a fucking action node? Uh, where the fuck's the nodes at? What the fuck's an action node? If branch for each. Oh. Are there ever, only ever two? Uh, you mean the logic nodes? Uh, there's one? Well, there's the for each object, but that's probably not what you mean. For n iterations, wait for n, compare teams. Compare. There's a, com the compare has three.
Oh, action nodes, in my opinion, anything that has a diamond in the top to go to another node. Oh, I'll tell you what you mean. I don't know. I feel like there's a couple that might have four. There might be a few that has four. Or three. I think it might be some of the event nodes, I thought. No, no, um, hold on. Here we go. On weapon, refill pickup. Acquiring player, weapon, weapon position is fully picked up. There's four. I knew there were four. Unless you mean that one on both sides and you're not talking about specifically events. Well, I can... um. And this one's actually got four on the left. This has got two sides of it, four on the left. If branches go to... Oh, I don't... If... What the fuck are you... They don't have actions I'm talking about. Branches can go to... Like to connect, you can only connect to one. You mean like, can a loop execute two things? You have to like chain nodes together. You can't like have a branch, you can't have a node. You can't have like a, like a node go like, you have like a node here that goes like out to like another node here and then also out to another node here. And they both like are supposed to work in, like it's supposed to go like, Instead of like this, you're supposed to have another node that then connects down to that. If that's what you mean, you don't want something else. I don't know what they're talking about. Okay, what am I doing? Okay. Oh, no, that's... Are there only ever two? Wait, I'm... So, wait, you mean, are there only ever, like, an F true, F false? Are there... You mean, is there any other nodes that have, like... So, wait, what's the question again? I'm confused. I don't, I don't know what you're, I'm confused. <laughs> All right, let's just copy this whole thing in the writer so I can get real work done. If two actions, if two action routes were. Oh, you mean, you mean like for each here, there's on completion, execute prefer option. You mean, are there only ever two of these? Okay, no, I see what you mean. And like, kind of like how in branch and there are two, I get what you're saying. Okay. I got a little, okay. Um, shit. I don't know. I think I've only, I off the top of my head, there's only ever been two. Like these are the ones that you're, that I can remember. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I have all the, the pictures in the thing, so. I don't know. Uh, I think there's only two. There might be, maybe there's one with three. I don't think there's any more with three. 
Uh, those picks are in the Discord. In my Discord, inside the Halo Forge info channel. Uh... Because there's only two to... And there's two for that. I think there's only two. But there might be eventually might be three, so just right you know, just pretend there's an in amount, you know? Just like don't be a baby about it. <laughs> there's just always an in amount of To be first-hand confused with those great. We're going to know. I'm telling you, tomorrow I'm going to explain everything. Everything is going to be explained. Any questions, I will do my best. Just don't do whatever the hell Josh just did to answer. Do, do the opposite of whatever the hell uh, the actions, whatever that is. Just ask it not that way and we'll be fine. Language barrier, man. I swear to God. Explain my programming language to the only thing that knows. Okay, Josh is making. Okay. If you this is this is an analogy for web developers. Basically, think like instead of like actually like working with like CSS and HTML directly, like you decide to like go use like a really shitty scuffed version of like Dreamweaver or something. I don't know if that's even still used. I'm like ten years behind on that shit. And like, imagine instead of actually using that, you're using like HTML in Dream Dream Reaver or something to like make like something shitty. I don't I don't know. He's he's basically making like he's making a he's making like a fucking markup language for Node Graph. Um, like literally, like he's using XML, like XML or HTML or any of the any of the million of them like bb code it's basically doing that but for node graph but it actually instead of being in node graph it's actually in c sharp so there, he's using the c, c sharp syntax for uh that earlier i was going to say imagine if he just spent this time like building like he could have spent this all that time working and building like a front end uh, like a javascript front end or something for connecting all the nodes really nice and clean and it would have probably been insane. If if three four three is like actively, if three four three actually actively, uh, wait, that's clean. Wait, what the fuck? Wait, that's clean. No prefab request is tomorrow. When launch happens. Well, no, you can do, there are, I mean, I'm, I have a list of things that I'm going to recreate. But yeah, um. Can we start the list? Oh, I have. Uh, hold on, hold on. Okay, if, if I don't know, I'm pretty sure you can still type in here. This, this fucking. Hold on, I'll literally just. If you really want to, uh, copy thread, uh, open thread, copy, copy link. Uh, th there, just do it. Click that and just send them in that. If you have, if there's any like, or I need, I, I should have made like a bot to be like, someone could like exclamation point request and then it would have went to like a fucking spreadsheet or something. But I'm busy on this thing that's probably not going to work because 343 is going to cuck me. I know. I, I would, one of these days, like.
Name switch does not kill someone to follow a relation should be four. Okay. Whatever, just stop yelling at me, Ryder. Give me stop giving me stupid squiggly lines. Path dot get file name file path. Oh no, don't format that. <laughs> oh nice. Oh my god. We need like a cheese emote. Get like a like a couple of burgers and a couple slices of cheese. Make a unique sandwich. Are there any um I don't know if I've got any uh Yeah, I really need to get emotes, because I don't have any emotes on this channel. I never have. Uh, no, stop trying to... F oh my god, I want to scream. Are you going to do that still? No, it's because I had comments. Read all bytes. Yep, that's fine. Someone's just... Pe I don't know if you guys can hear that in the background. Someone just, like, fucking, like... Someone's getting robbed or something. Someone's spinning tires. We, we don't need fall. We just need... Photoshop and look at the time. I, I don't even know what the fuck I want them to be because it's like it's like I don't even like you know I don't I don't know I'm just like now now I'm worried because like I'm scared that like it's going to be difficult to get these maps or make my tool work in retail and if that's the case I'm going to fucking cry like, if it's basically, like, impractical to keep, you know, for it to work. I would be so fucking upset. Like, I don't think it's enough to, like, make me quit the game. But it's definitely enough to be, like, instead of this being, like, a game that I forge and do stuff with until Sandbox comes out, it might just be, like, you know, like, maybe I'll do Halo on the side of Sandbox, you know? Oh, it's going to tell me so much. Reader open. Oh, God, this is formatted like a fucking idiot. What am, what am I doing? Like, who who wrote this? Josh is over here like... Like... Can I make all of these read only? Can I do this for everything actually? All members in file. I'm pretty sure they can be set to read only. It's probably for the best. Actually, no, undo that. There's no reason to. Besides to, to stop Ryder from yelling at me with squiggly lines. Extra data. So we should. Okay. So let's go open up uh let's go open up this and make a button. Not video studio code. Um for some fucking reason, um Ryder does not support WinForms 
for like is it like an editor thing? So every time I want to change it, make a UI change, I have to open up fucking Visual Studio. It went for its slow ass thing to load, and I'm gonna eventually swap over to Avalonia or WPF or something. Like I'll probably at least use. I'll probably start with WPF because I think WPF and Avalonia are very, very, very similar. It's just I like that Avalonia is cross platform. Bro, I ha that's one thing. That's actually um I don't know who it was. I was talking about electronics. It might have been you or s somebody. I was talking about electronics the other day. And that's one of the things that actually got me interested in it. Because I wanted to like start this project that used a VR headset to FP, like do like an FPV kind of like, like, like drone flying shit. Because I got the idea because there was this uh, Elite Dangerous. Hold on, VR. Uh... There's this thing, there's an elite VR cockpit for Elite Dangerous that allows you to have like a virtual throttle and stick so that it so that it works kind of like a VTOL VR. And I try I played the game with it a bit and it was really fucking cool. And I thought, holy shit, what would be even cooler than this if you had an FPV camera on a you know, like on a, on a drone and you flew it with a real stick like this in a VR? I thought it would be fucking sick. And I wanted to do it because I was interested in VR, like at the time, like really interested in like VR development at the time and like electronics. And I wanted to like see if I could do both. And then I realized I knew nothing about electronics and even less about developing VR shit. Wait, what? Just got a message. There might be community ask at a later date. Likely would be done via Waypoint. Quote. What's that? What's that too? It's just potential. <laughs> well, maybe I've seen this. Oh, it's another make. It's a make your tells video. Who would have thought? See, I'm actually really interested in like once VR, once because I feel like the problem is right now. It looks like maybe possible pipe reporting loading via waypoint the website. That would be big. Wait, was that who said that? Was that from like a person? Was that from was that a three four three quote or a community member quote? That's like, was that like from like? See, I'm actually, how he's using a virtual monitor with VR, that's something that I'm really, uh, the man himself, all right, okay, listen, I can't tell, I was going to ask who the fuck you're talking about, assume I know nothing about this fucking community, because I don't, Unique, the only two people that I interact with are you and Josh, and then occasionally I DM, like, Zmod and, like, Serasia, because, like, they, like, know things. So like, I don't know anything other than those, the, the four people I mentioned and like the people that come in the chat and hang out in my discord. <laughs> I don't know anyone. Listen, I stopped playing Halo. I stopped playing Halo games when I got my first computer that could actually play video games. So 2013, 2012, the head of Forge. Oh, okay. Oh, with the guy with the beard? He's got like that little, he's got the, like, he doesn't have a beard. I thought he had a beard. Like a, 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 a beard with gray, like gray hair kind of beard. Like the, the tips of his beard is gray. See, I recognize the name.
Or am I thinking of a different guy? Oh, this guy's bald as fuck. I take it back. That's not him. Who the fuck am I thinking about? Wait, is this not the, that, wait that's not the right guy. That's a different guy. 343. Three. The man's got a name similar to someone else. Wait, is that? No, that is him. Okay, so this is the guy to think? To think? This is the guy that... Wait, is he... How long has he been the Forge lead? Has he has he has he been it all the way through uh, Halo Infinite? Because is this the guy to praise? I'm Josh. I don't pay attention to this. This game is dead. This game was dead to me within two weeks of it coming out. Okay, and Halo was dead to me before the Master Chief Collection came out on PC. Which, that was only like a few years ago. Well, there was a guy that I had beard that I thought was him. So this is the guy that made Forge really good? He's the lead? They don't have time at the moment. Uh. It's fine. The community will figure it out for them. If he says, if he says it's po potentially possible to do it through Waypoint, then there might be chance for us to like make a little hacky bullshit workaround. Unless then like they don't allow that and then they start banning everyone who does it. Then it's like, well, fuck me. I guess I'll guess I'm doing down with the ship. You can't, you can't bet us all. Going down with the ship. Tied with a modern. Oh. Well, that's like 10 years from now, though. There's no way that's going to happen like like nine months. Like I'm telling you, I've got things to, I got other things to do. Like I could literally just come over here and I could just open sandbox like right here and just start doing sandbox stuff. Like the only reason I'm not is because Halo's happening tomorrow. And like, even if like you don't want to play sandbox, I'll go surf. Like I, I don't, I don't, I have nothing, nothing to lose. Except, I guess, like... Go get some Popeyes. Son of a bitch. Uh, if Halo's dead to me, because this is like... It's because doing this is fun and making things and like making maps is fun. And it's like the current like thing, you know? I mean, Halo is like a competitive, even like a, even the semi, even like a semi serious like multiplayer game died to me because I don't play like, I don't like I, I have keyboard mouse and this isn't the game. Like, you know, it's a it's a controller console game exclusively, and that's a whole other th thing. That's a whole other debate we're not getting into. But you know, I'd rather play like other shooters because at least you know. But then there's the um. I mean, you can say skill issue all you want. I mean, I was literally like without effort top fifty 
was I top 50 exactly? Was I was 55 in the keyboard mouse queue within the first week of this game's launch? So you can say skill issue all you want. I didn't play much of open. I did. I, I played like maybe like a dozen games, if even that, and like ended like high diamond, I think. Not enough to get actually through it, but I, I don't know. I just, I lost all the desire to play this game, like go, to play ranked in this game. But then Forge coming out was cool and like the no graph stuff is cool. And it's like, like I also have friends that are really into Halo and I have like some Xbox people. Michael, I don't know if any, I don't know if like, I know, I know Annoying Lizard's heard of Michael. Like Michael, uh, Michael and that group of people like play Halo, and this is like a thing for us to play stuff together and making stuff is fun, and also like making like things like pushing the limits of things. Like, hey, we can't forge in a, you know, we forging in Blender. Like that sounds fucking stupid, but like it's like cool and it's. I've always wanted to make tools. I'm actually. Somebody asked me what I do, like on the street. Just to be simple, I'd probably say I'm a game developer. But really what I want to do is just, like, I actually have, I think I have more fun making tools to make games or making tools to make other things easier than actually, like, making games. <laughs> With the Forge, yeah, well, the th I, I've seen part of it, what the, the vision of Forge was. And, well, I think I've seen part of it. And it was, that was the most recent Q&A. I think they talked about it, didn't they? What are you talking about? All this. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the community stage here at the Halo World Championship in Seattle. We're going to... Thank you for coming and watching. Uh, Michael, you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Welcome, everybody. I don't know if there's audio. Uh, I'm Michael Shore. I'm the Forge Design Lead. I'm Raheem, I'm a Forge lead artist. Hi, I'm Josh Horda, I'm the Forge lead engineer. And I'm Tom French, I'm the multiplayer creative director on Halo Infinite, and was a Forge lead in Halo 5. Oh yeah, got some history, which actually, we're about to talk about. We get to start with Tom? We get to start with Tom, with some Halo 5 stuff. So Tom, how do we kind of approach making Forge in Halo 5? Yeah, I mean, I think the big shift that we wanted to do on Halo Can 5 is thinking still? about uh, the UDC community as little developers. Well, I was thinking of this guy. This is the guy I was thinking of. The guy with the beard. I was thinking of this guy. Making it less of a toy and more of a tool, that was kind of the goal. And so we really built towards that. Um, and then we wanted to keep it fluid, like Halo's fun and fluid to play. We wanted to kind of hit some of those. Is there audio? I, I was going to check, but... No, this has got to be. It's going through system. No, we're good. I just had to look over to the left. Okay, I can already tell you, because I haven't seen this. The way they're talking about it isn't the isn't the vision that I want to have, that I, I want to see Halo as. I, I had a, I ca had a comment. This, I had a, I po I, somebody posted on Reddit a couple weeks ago talking about this. And I'll, I'll pull this post up again. I read this before, and I think this is, I think I said it best then. The, the Forge waste, uh, wish list. So... What I said, so this guy was asking, like, what are the wish lists of Forge? And I'm just going to read the whole damn post. Actual keyboard mouse support. Keyboard mouse support in this leak was so fucking bad. So many weird issues with scaling and magnets. Like, it's not, uh, that makes it not fun. Uh, so not fun that it drove me into making a Blender add-on that allows you to forge in Blender. Um, second, I would love this game to be like the upcoming Sandbox. Okay, we're going to get, I'm going to get into this in a moment. Um... It's Gary's Mod 2, made by Face Punch, the developers of Gary, uh, Gmod. Uh, think game, uh, think game engine, Unreal slash Unity, levels of customization, but in a Roblox style content sharing platform. Three Four Three needs to consider full sending it as a true sandbox game, making Forge the main focus of the game and allow custom models, textures, animations, and have a quote unquote real programming language 
no graph is fucking amazing. What you can do is some you can do some crazy complex things, but there are some nodes that don't exist that should. And if we had a real mod slash map API, map API, imagine what could be made. This is what I hope in the next Halo game. Uh, this is what uh, what I open. What I hope. I meant to say hope here. What I hope the next Halo game is whenever it happens. Sandbox is gonna beat them to it, and no one's gonna give a fuck because Sandbox is gonna be fucking amazing when it comes out. Like, if there was a game, if there was a game studio that I would trust more to make a game, make to make a Roblox style Sandbox game. I trust no one more than Face Punch. Face Punch has been incredibly fucking... Say what the fuck you want about Rust and Gary's mod, or even, like, British people in general. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, but they have been incredibly consistent with their... <laughs> uh, with, <laughs> um, with their... Um, like, their, their community, like, like, informing the community what's happening. So like, you know, we, for a while with uh, Reach, what sorry, with Infinite, there was just a time where we had no clue what the fuck was going on. There was like a, a couple of months there, like when the Forge leak happened, like after a few weeks or even like a month or so after the Forge leak happened, to where like, we had no clue what, what the, when Forge happened, what the fuck's going on? They didn't really say anything. They're all like kind of hush hush. And that's kind of been my opinion, my view from the outside looking in on 343. They just kind of like, there's some, like, why have they been like quiet about these things? Um, so my, my thing, my, my point is, is that 343 has been incredibly, no, face punch has been incredibly, incredibly consistent with their dev blog stuff. If you go to the last dev blog, they've been doing this, like they used to do it weekly. These gaps used to be, or used to be a week apart. And I used to read these like every fucking day. Or every, every week. I mean, not every day. I used to read these every week, every Friday when they came out. And even now, they, they stop doing it every week because it's, they, they, I think they, like a couple of years ago, they said, hey, instead of doing it every week, we're doing it every month. And you can see like November 3rd, October 20, well, that's that, for the October 6th to October 3rd. So you can see it's like, either very consistent and the kind of stuff they have in these are, um, they basically just show off what they're working on. This isn't necessarily gonna, they're not guaranteeing that this will be in the game. They're just showing what the fuck they're working on. Like, they show stuff off, like, hey, here's what we've been working on. Here's some stuff. Here's some improvements. Here's some serverless improvements. This stuff isn't guaranteed to happen. It's just, like, some of it might be, but they're just talking about what they're doing. And multiple people on the Face Punch team comes in here and, like, talks. Like, here's like, some Bill stuff. You'll, you might see, here's how, literally multiple different people from the Face Punch team come in and, like, say, hey, here's what I've been working on. And I get it. 343 is big, but, like, I feel like if, you know, like, the if they were at least a bit more open about like this and like more, more clear on the, like what's going on, I feel like less people would be upset about like the company in general right now. See, the thing is, leaving the Forge for the next game, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't even know if they're going to go in next game. I don't know if like, I, I I don't know much about the. I, I feel like they going going just going next game is like I don't I don't know if that's a play. I I think they've burned all the goodwill with this game that if they made a second one it might just flop harder than this one. Even if it was good, it's like it's not gonna like everyone's like oh it's just another Halo game. Everyone, you know, it, I feel like it's gonna take something significant if they did make another game. To like come back from like this, they basically I think what they have to do is make this game decent. So that everyone is like, okay, three four three is not the piece of shit that the piece of shit that we thought company that we thought they were. Uh, Twi I don't actually know that. Is that like a is that like a weekly or like a is that like a an update like like a dev is that kind of like they're doing here like every month where they give like an update on what's happening? Because they do the same thing with Sandbox here. They've been doing like more or less every month. Ever since the like beginning of this year talking about uh sandbox and showing what it is i mean i i guess to the people that don't know what sandbox is it's literally gary's mod 2 built on source 2 it's actually one i think it's the only game that has like actual source 2 engine access from valve i think it's the only source 2 game that isn't a valve first party game it's the first i guess third party uh source 2 game um that is being developed i think i might be wrong on that 
If not, it's at least the first one being uh, developed. <clears throat> and they're actually like, the, the thing is that you look at this and it looks like, it's just like, like a 3D game. Like, you know, like, it looks kind of like Gary's mod. Like there's a guy in third person, like placing stuff. It looks like, like, oh, it's just going to be like another third person game like Gary's mod. But the amount of control you have in this, shit like this gets created. This is in fucking sandbox. But it's a fucking 2D game. And it's like, this is made in the same, the same thing. You can load up Sandbox and play shit like this in 2D. I mean, it's bad graphics. Yeah, but that's not the, graphics were the fucking point. You know, obviously, if like the guy who, the, whoever made this could put more time into the graphics and make it all look pretty. I mean, but like, there's like some other stuff like here. Like, here's another example of like, of like some of the crazy shit. And here's another example of like, a, a, you, you get the wide variety of stuff that can happen in Sandbox. Like, you get... The, the amount of control that you have in Sandbox is fucking crazy. You get to do so much cool shit, and it's gonna be... I'll pull, I'll pull it up. I'll open the damn game just to show you. So, like, Roblox. So, like, if you... Let's say we want to play a Roblox right now. We all want to get on Roblox and play something. You'll go to Roblox and, like... Ugh. There's, like, the Roblox game list. I don't know, like, where you even... Is there a way... Can I view the Roblox game list without, like, opening Roblox? But you know the thing I'm talking about, where there's like the big long list of like, there's like the, like this, where you see all the games here, like all the recently played, the favorites, and you have a list of the stuff, and you go to the games, and you see all these, and you can like search for what to play, and it's all like just there. You could like, it's basically like a fancy server browser with game modes. We open up Sandbox real quick, and you'll see, uh, Sandbox, Sandbox, uh, play Sandbox. If I open up Sandbox, it's, it's the same thing. Discover. Yeah, this. It's basically so like this, like with how you have all these different game modes and stuff. And again, like Ro Roblox, there are some crazy unique things in Roblox. It's crazy what this game's fucking, what's happened in this fucking game. It's insane. But like Sandbox gives you even more control. So like here's the main menu and here's like all the game modes and shit. Like there's a TTT thing already. There's like, like some other bullshit. Like, you know, like you, you sc scroll through it and like you just look through the games, and like the server browser. And, like, you know, you see, like, there's an avatar editor and shit if you want to be blue or whatever. There's, like, castle defense. I don't, I don't know what the fuck this is, but y you get the idea. It's basically, like, a platform. It's a game engine. It's, it's literally, like, a game engine. But with the network, um, but with, like, the backing of, like, the, the, the kind of, like, the asset, the, the, the website. Uh, it's, it's, I think it's called Asset Party. With the backing of this. And there's also, a, they also have like the, the, like how we have prefabs in Halo. They've also got that as well here. So people have uploaded like models and stuff. I think these are uploaded by people. That like, you can just like download and use. Well, I, I don't know if ever, anyone can use them, but like basically, I think these might be downloaded with games. Basically all the assets are downloaded from the fucking game stuff. Like it's like Steam Workshop without Steam Workshop. Does it have Halo? Probably not. Uh... But, like, there's, like, assets and shit. And I'm pretty sure you can make these, like, free for anyone to use in the editor. Because, like, the actual, like, uh, sandbox editor, if I was to open that up, I'm pretty sure I should be able to spawn some of this stuff in, in the editor, I think. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Entity, 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 file new. Oh, fucking file new, damn it. Entities, 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 entities. Uh, and then we go, let's say, like, just add in TTT here, and we download the assets. So I basically, I'm downloading, like, the assets for the TTT mode. Let's say I wanted to make, a, like, a map for it or whatever, make, like, customize it in some way. It's downloading all the entities and stuff for from this so that I can just fucking use them. So if we come down here, there's probably, like, something related to that. There's got to be. I think, I've never done this, but I know you can do it. I know there's a way to, like, see the assets. I know there's a way. Yeah, so this is actually the sandbox, like, editor. So, like, well, what I was just in, this is Hammer. And if you've ever done any source things, like, if you ever tried to make a map for Gary's Mod or CS, this is, this is the new Hammer. Uh, you might be a... Uh, 
if you uh, have a hard time visualizing what it what it is because it looks different, uh, just go look up. A, here's what Source One Hammer looked like. It looked like this. Uh, really ugly, really dog shit looking, really nasty. And this is the Source Two Hammer because it is a game. This again, like I said, this is the only third party Source Two game. And it's like the Hammer Two is actually really fucking good. They've improved it so much. And then there's like some other editor stuff in here. Uh, like here's like the main like preview thing. If I was to hit like play, it will like load up like whatever I was working on last. I think I don't know what I was doing. It like loads up the server and connects you or whatever. And I, I forgot what I was doing actually. Can you use a controller interface with this too? No, I, it crashed. Well, see that's the point. Like that's where like the that's where like the perspective of I'm not like I'm sympathetic to the question because I like Halo is like one of the only games that you can make like one of the few games that you can actually make things with a controller that feel good but you, like most of like most of actually like most of the actual creation process is like like always been done with a keyboard and mouse so you're never going to really find actual like keyboard uh, actual controller support outside of like games like halo for like these tools like you might like there are like people that use like fancy like different like input devices to like navigate when 3d modeling and stuff i forgot what they're called but no you, to answer the question no and i understand like i'm sympathetic to the question because like halo is like that game that like allows anyone with a controller and just a console to do shit, but, um, but the problem is, I guess what I'm saying is, is that limitation itself is part of the problem. Well, yeah, okay, well, yeah, I mean, the, the problem is, is that You don't. There doesn't. There could. They. They both aren't independent of each other. They. They can both exist at the same time. And I would say it's more important. In I guess it depends on the type of game, and clearly with the way that they're structuring Halo, focusing more on the player creation is more important than focusing on developers. But what I would what I would say is for a game's longevity it's more important to focus on the developer experience and like developer tools than it is to work uh, than for players. Cause I feel like long run developer tools normally are way more powerful and give you way more like options to do stuff than like a, a player side, like a player, like side editor. And like most of the cool stuff, like look, look, like look, like look like what's, look what's happening in the master chief collection right now. And that's what I want. I want more of these, like, I want more stuff that's happening in MCC. And obviously Sandbox is, it's more focused as a developer, like, tool. Because that's how Gary's Mod was. Like, you could go into Gary's Mod and create maps and stuff in, like, the Sandbox mode or whatever. And, like, you know, dick around like that and have fun creating stuff and sharing, like, different, like, you know, like, prefabs in Gary's Mod. But the main focus, you know, the really cool, like, fun things that you experience in Gary's Mod, like, you know, prop hunt and the fucking TTT and the roleplay shit, there's mainly, like, you know... Most of those things are, like, too complex to, like, expose to, like, you know, like, a player to, like, you know, a visual scripting thing. I mean, I guess they could have. But my point is, is that we, 343 needs to, like, consider going the sandbox route or, like, a more of a Roblox-style route. Yeah, I just, the thing is with how, like, how much that goes into the platform of, like, like, the Geometry Reporter, like, there's a, I, I don't see it happening anytime soon, though. Unless they've been working on it and not saying anything for a lo for a while. Like, unless they've just not said anything. If they, if they were even, like, halfway done with it, they would have shown something off. Like, there's no way. But um, I just want more. I want I want them to like focus more on like. I want the game to be more like fucking Roblox. 
And more like Sandbox. Well, you can actually play Roblox right now. Not many people can play Sandbox. But I would say, if you were looking into specifically creating maps, on the on the whole, like, usable as a player, I agree with you that the editor, most of the stuff in the editor might not be a great player-facing tool, but I would say specifically Hammer isn't that complicated. Like, specifically Hammer, like, while this looks complicated, I feel like if you really wanted to, like, actually make maps for a thing, like, there, there's half of this stuff is irrelevant anyway. Like, the only, the only, like, two things that really matter are, like, this stupid tool and, like, like, this stupid tool and then the ability to, like, set it to be, uh, uh, set that. Wait, you're supposed to be hollow. How do I, wait, how do I make it hollow after the fact? I don't know if you can do that after the fact. Oh, well, there we go. Now it's hollow. So I'm still really bad with hammer. Like, the ability to, like, make things like this, and then also, like, the ability... These fucking dogs, I swear to God. Also, the ability to, like, spawn entities in, like... Like, uh, like there's a sky... Like, a sky thing here, and then, like, there's also another, like... Like, a prop? I don't... I, again, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not too familiar with Hammer myself. Like, there's, like, a lights... Like, spotlights and stuff here, and... Like, like, not, like this isn't... This is... When looking at this, it's, like, not too dissimilar from Forge. Like, there's a tool to spawn, like, primitives that you can scale, and then there's, like entities here that work like you know here's like a sky camera or whatever i assume that's for like a sky box or whatever and then there's like a player spawn point it's like hey look that's a that looks kind of like that looks kind of like halo obviously the sensitivity is a little too fast but like it's like while it's not controllable usable and it's definitely not like as easy to pick up and use as forges i would say it's not that far off I feel like maybe it would take like a few more hours more to like kind of like get the basics of this compared to Forge, especially if you've already forged. But my my point is, is it's not. I don't think it's too bad. And I feel like three four three is scared to scare off the kind of the more casual foragers, and I get that. Like I would be hesitant as well if I was in their position, but I feel like. Like, more people, I feel like more people consume Forge content than create it. And if I was to make a blind fucking guess, oh, there's the Sky stuff. If I was to make a blind fucking guess, most of the stuff that people make and consume are made by people that aren't your average casual just foraging for fun to make a map or whatever. I'd imagine it's made by people more like Unique who fucking grind that shit out, go super fucking ham. Um... Yeah, I prefer again, especially like, like more options prefer uh, more options than easier options. I do too as well, coming from a more developer background. But there's like a line to be had. You know, there's like a balance that you need to like have. Like you know, too easy to use tools, alongside like the powerful. You know, you know, you know the the power. You need you need both because obviously you want you don't want like you don't want to be an absolute fucking like annoying. Like, you don't want it to be difficult to get into, but you want it to be powerful, and doing both is hard. That's the kind of my, that's my complaint about Houdini, is that it's incredibly powerful, but difficult to get into. Which is why, like, you, you, you'll hear, uh, if you ever, if you go ask around in the 3D world, and I, I bet you right, if you ask anyone that's ever, like, that does, like, like, anyone who, like, models that has used or tried to look at Houdini, or even does it professionally and works in Houdini, they'll fucking tell you that, like, Houdini, Houdini's fucking weird because it's weird. I don't, they, they didn't need to make it so fucking difficult. They could have. There's some things they could have done to make it less pain in the ass, but. We fear uh, copyright took them into legal trouble. They said recently the it's too big a thing. They want to look back at. See, like I. Again, I'm sympathetic to that. But what the if that if they truly said that what what the fuck are they actually scared of? Like maybe they're scared of because maybe they're scared of like game ratings, because like community content and like getting game ratings for like you know selling a game in whatever that place, like that could be difficult. I'd be more sympathetic to game ratings than I would to be like copyrighted materials, because like I mean we're currently depending on which platform you're listening to me on. 
are dealing with like like the biggest copyright potentially the biggest copyright like liability on the planet youtube google you know this is like youtube is fucking it deals with this show all the time so i guess so does sandbox and gary's mod it's like it's one of those things that's like it's not like it is 343's responsibility to to like remove copyrighted content off their platform and prevent it from happening but it's not like it's the, it's like it's not their responsibility to know absolutely everything that's copyrighted like some like the, the, there's like that's why the, like youtube has the ability to like like claim a video like you know send them across and like you know do the whole copyright process on youtube if someone steals one of your videos cuz like it's it's somewhat on 343 but it's also like if someone steals something it's like have a system that allows them to like get that copyrighted shit removed it's it's complicated, I guess. Which I guess is why three. What gets I guess with Halo, it's like Forge isn't their main focus, so like they're not willing to commit that effort into making that possible because Forge isn't. They don't see Forge as the main thing of this game. So like I don't know. There's a, there's a lot. To, there's a lot to this fucking problem. I just want more. I just I just want I want I just want more out of Halo. I mean, I guess I, I with Infinite, I, I did get more out of Halo. It's just I want, um, I just want, um, oh, really? Why didn't you, um, why didn't you change your name? Just delete you and also a custom object a little. Uh... Like I hopefully they'll hopefully my this is like my like this is my dream three four three finally opens their eyes to the to the like the industry trend that Starcraft and uh, Warcraft set back in like like the early two thousands hopefully they finally open their eyes to that that they set well, actually even that even Bungie set back with Forge and stuff early on and like how how much Forge made Halo three a great game. Like, would Halo 3 really have been a good game compared to 2 if it didn't have Forge? Like, I don't think, I, I don't, I don't think it would have been. I think it would have been kind of like, maybe the campaign was better. I think the campaign was, I'll say the campaign was maybe a little bit better. Maybe, I don't know. And then also one that you had a lot of mods on PC. Yeah, at least they said that. But I mean, that's the, that's the... At least in my in my opinion, it doesn't fix the kind of problems that I have with the whole game and like the direction. Like it's like yeah, you can have these like little like tiny little like bug like pad like band aids on the problem, but like you know, it's this wouldn't be a problem in the first place if you tried to approach it from the direction. All I'm saying is there's a reason why games like the StarCraft Two arcade and also the StarCraft One like arcade whatever it's called like the the mods for StarCraft 1 and Warcraft. There's a reason. You know, think about it. Warcraft, a Warcraft mod, went on to create the most popular genre on the fucking planet, or one of them at least. Like, you know, MOBAs were a mod for fucking Warcraft and fucking, you know, uh, a fucking, uh, the auto battlers were a, were a mod for fucking Dota. Like, and like Minecraft is, you know, why is Minecraft stupid popular? Obviously it's stupid popular because the creativity and also, like, Minecraft mods are stupid popular as well because of, like, you could just do whatever the fuck, you, you know, you keep the creativity, the community creativity of these games. They don't, they, they, I swear to God, they've been sleeping on it. It's why games like Gary's Mod have been, like, consistently popular for years. And I'd imagine even StarCraft II's arcade is stupid popular for years. Even though StarCraft II, I think, is kind of in a bad spot right now, maybe. I don't know.
Is Gmod even on the list anymore? How do you even search? Oh my god, Steam. There we go, 41th. I mean, there's a reason why games like this are really popular. And also, like, T-Mod Loader, the mod, uh, one of the mod things for Terraria, like, like, there, there's, there's, like, there's, like, reasons why these, like, things like this have, like, thousands of players, thousands and thousands of players still, even after the fact. Like, there's, what, like, 40,000 peak people in Terraria, and there's, like, 20,000 peak people on T-Mod Loader? And it's like, bro, like, that's half the fucking peak. So, like, T-Mod Loader pops up when you actually load Terraria. So, like, basically, I think when you're playing this game, when you're playing uh, Terraria, it, I think it says you're playing T-Mod Loader and Terraria at the same time. I'm not sure. Maybe it does. Maybe it doesn't. But regardless, half the fucking people that play Terraria are using, you know, playing mods. You know, there's... VR, and again, VR Chat's, like, the best modern example of this. VR chat would not be a good game if they took the 343 scared bitch approach and were like, we don't want to deal with this stuff because of content moderation and stuff. It's like, you know, like VR chat's amazing because of it, you know, like obviously content moderation and stuff is like, it, it's a difficult thing and even VR chat struggles with it, but that's why I want them to full send it, you know? That's why I want more from Yeah, it's been a minute. It's just all yeah, I and I I get it. Like that is also a, like it really is. There there's a lot. But I mean there's there's there also is a lot of stuff that isn't. Like a lot of the world stuff might necessarily might might not maybe some of it is, but Infinite Five Forge because it's too complicated. We go with Infinite. That's. I'm actually less. I. I don't. I don't know how to like. I don't know how to like respond to the people that like that do that. Like I can understand that. Like yeah, it's complicated. But like the people, like honestly, I don't. I don't think they're gonna like. Like, if they did, if I feel like if a person gave up on Forge because it was too complicated, they probably weren't going to use it in the first place. Like, I feel like because it's it's not like infinite is that hard. I mean, it's not like the placing and moving items is particularly like it, much harder than like Halo 5 or 3. I mean, even, you know, Halo Infinite might actually be easier to forge in than 3 back in the day with the fucking weird ass scuffed goats merging bullshit. Like, I would say 3 in a lot of ways was harder than fucking it's harder than doing stuff in Reach, or not Reach, uh, than Infinite right now. Um I don't know. I just hope the next Halo game is just they forge is the focus and they like really lay in to like what makes a lot of the games like what makes seem like fact the games like Factorio and City Skylines and uh what else is on this list? C Civ Civ is another one. Um games like Civ like Terraria with T Mod Loader and G Gary's Mod and Sandbox and VR Chat. Hopefully they lean into what makes those games great other than like, you know, those those games are great on their own, but they also have like also DayZ. Do you think? Holy fuck! Here's Exhibit Fucking A. This is the best example of mod support turning a game around. I don't know how many of you guys have like paid attention to the development of DayZ over the past ten years or however long. I don't know what the rates look like on uh, on uh, Xbox. This game was dead. This game had less than five thousand people playing a few years ago. Look at this. Charts. Lifetime concurrent players. It came out. Let's go all. 
it came out in 2013 to 45, 35, like 45 ish thousand people. 2018, it was below 5,000 people. The reason this died so fucking hard was compared to the Arma 2 and the Arma 3 mods that were the Daisy like, because there was like Overpock and like all the other stuff back in Arma 2 to where there was like super crazy, like there was a ton of guns, there was base building, it was basically rust, but in an Arma environment. And the Daisy standalone, basically, their mod support was like dog shit. And then over time, I want to say this update, maybe in 2018, they redid the graphics and everything. They did like the rendering to make the game run better. So everyone started coming back. And then I want to say sometime after this, but before this point, somewhere between 2018 and 2020, actual mods started getting developed. I don't know if they changed the, like the mod tools or something. An actual good Daisy mod, like good mod service, came out, and everyone started flocking back. Because the game doesn't tell you what you need to do. Oh, I see. Okay, no current plans to allow to allow port into Forge. No current plans to al uh, to allow. Wait, was did, did he literally say like allow like asterisk allow? What does that mean? So, is, um, so th could that mean there's no official, they have no official route, route but. I, I, we'll figure it out. Trust me, we will figure it out. Somebody will. Maybe not me, maybe not you, but somebody will. You know, like Daisy, like made a, a huge one eighty, and like, and is like kind of back as like kind of like the now default way to play Daisy instead of going and playing like Armor Two mods or Armor Three mods. Like, I feel like if you wanted to play da a Daisy like game or play Daisy, you no longer have to go to Arma and play it because the fucking standalone is finally caught up with the rest of the fucking games. Be yeah, more or less, they don't want to pay someone to do it. Okay, well, thankfully, like we're like dumb enough to like do this shit for fr free. Like, fuck. Oh, yeah, I was going to make that window on this button. I need to make a new window, a new window. Add a window. Uh, or is it a win, win a form? That's it. Right now, there's no support for that. Um, uh, maybe. I I have I'm I'm skeptical of when he says take a Herculean effort to work and it would take resources. I'm skeptical of that. About to leave. <laughs> I I'm maybe he's right. Maybe it is going to be a difficult thing to do even by the community. But I doubt. Maybe when he says that, he says it's going to be a hard effort to work in a way that's like what they would consider working because obviously what 
what we consider working is, you know, the current, the, us loading into Halo Infinite right now and being able to play stuff uh, in Forge. Maybe, maybe he's like coming from the perspective of like an official way of working. Not in like the hacky bullshit kind of dumb shit that we've been doing. Uh, if that's not, if I can't get it to work, I'm going to cry. Again, it's not, I'm not going to be the only one getting fucked here. I think they're going to give us, uh, going to give us a way officially download. See, that would be nice. Giving away of the officially download and save files via waypoint. That would be the dream. Which honestly they should, because if anything, if they've seen anything with the shutting down of like Halo, the original Halo Three and that shit. Uh, the if imagine if like the community had a way to fully back up all of that data instead of like having people like manually like back it up because that shit was all like you had to, like manually do that. Like, I'd imagine if that sh if it was publicly available, people would have just like got like fucking web scrapers and shit and just like went through every fucking thing and downloaded it as like an archive, you know, like, and then we'd still have all the original uh, stuff. Son of a bitch, man. What did I call that, even? So that's what I need, and I need to get, I need to go, um, form one. Folder browser dialog. I'm going to pull this out to its own function. Probably here in UI. I kind of hate this. I didn't want to pull this into another. Oh no, that's not the right thing. Delete you. On. 
What's the syntax for out again? Okay, so that's that's uh, this is actually a thing that I haven't really took advantage of, even though I think it's pretty clean. I think it's clean. Wait, what? Return false? What do you mean? Oh, it must be assigned before it returns. Uh, so it must. Okay, I didn't know that actually. So basically, it gives us an option to know if this uh, folder dialog is was valid. So basically, if the dialog was selected, or the, if the dialog result was okay, we, I'm having a stroke. Tire lunch break in the Popeye's drive through and didn't get, oh. So basically, we're uh, taking the string that was passed in, we're setting it, and then returning true, and returning true. If it's basically, the, if this is true, if the, the return, if what the function returns is true, then we know the selected path is valid. If not, then we... We know it's not. It's a, it gives us a nice, sh quick shorthand to do. If we go, um, select folder from dialog, and we create, uh, create, um, we pass in folder path here. Is it because it's unassigned? Oh yeah, out. So basically, now we know uh, is if if so basically, if this returns true, we know folder path is valid, and then we can go call this with the folder path. So let's go make sure that I'm actually checking. Um, if file dot exists file path if it does not exist turn oh my god help me Okay, so if I run this, does it pop up? Dev? Oh yeah, that's right. I'm not creating that on that. Okay.
just caught a bug. So now we run it, and now we have the dev form. Now it should give us a folder to select from, which then we go for Halo. Then we select this folder. Selected file does not exist. Okay, okay, okay. So what we need to do now is once we've selected that folder, uh, it's a selected file does not exist because I'm an idiot. We need to get, um, what's the shorthand to get all files of type with a certain extension, shorthand, shorthand, why think when I get all files path and then, okay, nice. What is the path of, what is these uh, extension? All the forge, so we're getting all those, all the files, and then we're going. And then this, re this should return. So let's go through this and clean this up. Um. Let's just return the forge model data. But 3 a.m. brain hates you. It's a uh, forge model data. Which, what is the path here? It's the static model path. And then we return. Go list. This dog, man, I swear to God. Is it, is it serialized object really? K 
Can you not do that? How do I always forget this? Is it really just... Okay, I guess that works. Why do I, what did I think, um, doing the other thing? What did I think of? Actually, that shouldn't be a problem. Now we see if it crashes. What do you mean? Yeah, you're going to yell at me because it's not nullable. Fuck off. I bet it's because I copied it. Something fucked up with the file permission, maybe? I need a multi-type linked list in C Sharp. I hate... Oh, my God. Uh, just... Uh, you got this. So, there's all our object IDs. What do you guys think? Well, all our relative, uh, all, there's all the data it's for Blender processing. I could have been done with this a few hours ago, but I got a little rambly. I mean, you say congrats, but it's about to be all useless tomorrow when they make this impossible to, like, take advantage of this tool, and then I'm going to literally die, because fuck 343. I wish they told me how many was in it. How many was in the list would be nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe. Wait, 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 time out, time out, time out, time out, time out. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. I, do, I got something for you guys. I have something, I have, I remembered something. I am no longer concerned about it. You wanna know why I'm no longer concerned about it? I'm gonna show you why I'm not concerned. I'm going to show you right goddamn now why I'm not concerned.
if it ever decides to load. Honestly, there might be less rubber banding in the Hamachi away. The winter update tomorrow. Woo. Okay, I need you guys to explain this. Explain, the, explain, explain. Hold on. Explain this. Is this stuff from people who have access? True. Good point. Because this stuff was uploaded forever ago. It was supposed to be the API. Okay. So, if they're able to upload images and shit through the API and set a bunch of cat, uh, the tags like cats and... I'm getting desperate. Please respond. I If this was done through the API, what's stopping it from working? Like, for real? You know what I mean? Maybe there's hope. Because I would guess... I still have faith that those files are going to be sent through the same... Uh, the, a similar, like, HTTP request that the... Okay, no, no, no. Hear me out. Hear me out. I guess it all stems on what specifically they did to mod the early build into having saves. I guess it depends on that. So now I need to get the base path. I'm not concerned anymore. I, I think I think we're fine. Yeah, well, the only concern, because someone mentioned it before, is it might not go through a similar... Because the reason why Fiddler works in these, like, like, these, like, web API, like, development tools work is because they're using... Like the data is being sent over like HTTP or HTTP requests, and if you put like a proxy in the middle of it, like how kind of like Fiddle is working, you can like intercept the like the like the thing that keeps the pad like it's on the browser. I guess I can keep it retired simple. Uh, the little padlock here, it keeps this basically it intercepts the data that requires the the, the web the connection to actually be secure, and it goes to Fiddler instead, and then allows you to actually read the data. Because it, it allows it to be unencrypted. But someone mentioned that it, it doesn't go through that and that it was UDP, which I maybe that was true. But I feel like maybe because it, it being just being raw dog UDP, I doubt that. In Halo 5, I mean, I doubt that in Halo 5. I mean, they could have had. 
for the, to the uninitiated so like the udp is like the most like it's there might be other ways of communicating but it's like the it's like the most basic way of like sending data over the internet basically you just take some bytes and you just send them TCP is a little bit more complicated because you it, it's it's literally built on top of UDP and you take bytes and you send them, but you verify that the other side received them. So like if they haven't received them and they're like, hey, I didn't receive this shit, they send it again and again until they do receive it. With obviously probably with a timeout, but So if they did build it, if they just kind of raw, but basically like all this stuff is built on top of it anyway, but basically like the reason it works is because it's being sent over like a format that's like well known and has like really good debug tools. They're paid into this stuff. Okay. Well, I guess we only have developers in the chat right now. <laughs> it's only, it's only me, you and Josh. Woo. So hopefully, hopefully it's all over because everything else, even the fucking game menu. Oh, nope. Not a dad. Oh. Um, sysadmin or something. I don't know. Close enough. Development without, uh, development without actually having development. I mean, you, you, one level higher. I sometimes like to role play as one. I just don't have the money to. Okay, I guess we're ready to import all this stuff into Blender. Oh my god, this is gonna... So, I need to get... So, the Blender side of this needs to be... Um... And close that. And probably that. So now I need this data here. I'm going to put it up one file higher. So we're going to read this. So we need to... So inside of blend, Blender, Blender, Blender add-on. I need the, the Blender add-on, please. We need to go and we need to... Uh, we need to create a new property. So let's go scripting and open up the new blend, the blender add-on. Projects. Development. No, uh, projects. Projects. Why is it not in order? Development, software, blender, forge tools. Core, under add on, boom, open. So we need to add another. So what I need to do. This is what we want. We want this. We want uh So can stream like three. Yeah, I'm probably gonna. I'm actually about to as well. I'm gonna probably get these items. Get get the foundation for these items to be imported. Then I'm probably gonna do the same. Honestly. So we need a class. We we'll need to uh, register this. Register this class. 
rid of that class, and then we need to create a class with What is the exact names of these fucking things? Item ID and file path. Why is item ID capitalized and file path not? That's a valid class, right? What's the class? Is it semicolon? Is that class syntax? Oh yeah, you need the little thingies, that's right. Oh, in the name. There we go. So we go JSON. Let's just go import this. I'm gonna eventually pull these all into a module and have multiple uh, files. I know it's one big, This is. I'm trying to avoid writing Python. So to avoid writing Python, I'm actually avoiding uh, making things organized because that requires more Python. I'm just going to hard code this for now. I know I'm a fucking idiot. What's the website that, uh, hold on, sorry, 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 I'm not paying attention. Uh, what's the website for the Discord time thingy? Oh, Josh, do you still have that? Because of how cool, I should, okay, I should look into that. Honestly, that's, that seems... The Unix time converter thing. For like Markdown or whatever. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'm actually I'll look into it if. It... Oh God, Mars loads. Jason loads. Jason dot loads. 
loads data. I'll just copy the rest of this. Okay, didn't yell at me at any syntax bullshit. Oh, um, that would do it. Window system console. Wait, no, I, not not this Do how do I convert it to a how do I map it to a class? Do custom. There we go. Py, custom Python object. What? Oh, I'll show you. Here in Discord, uh, there's this. So, like, in Discord, you can put in this, uh, it's like the syntax, something like T, this, and then, like, the Unix time stamp. So I go over here and, like, do it in a channel that doesn't matter. See, that's January 6, 1970. You can see, like, if you go this T, semicolon, and then, like, the Unix time. <laughs> you, get, you get shit like this. And that's, I think, what Unix just sent is the time sent for Forge coming out. Or is, does F need to be? I don't know, whatever, but... Whatever. It, it basically it gives you like a, a for your life. Oh, okay, okay. Because it's uh, it basically Discord formats it to be into your specific time zone. Quite cool, actually. I've seen it before. I just forgot about it. Parse to JSON in a custom student. I'm confused. Because it's not going to work.
Does this actually output anything? Did that work? Namespace ID. It does work. Wow. Okay. That's a lot easier than I thought it was. Think I've hitting tab. Yeah, that's. Son of a bitch. The root path that I need to care about would be Halo data, levels, no, okay, hold on, Josh, what is it? I, I, I always have to check. Let's go to Josh, and we're going to Google Note. See, this is what I do. I go to Josh's DMs, I go to Note, and I think, think you're being a good notepad, and then I, above that message, I have the, fo the, the path that I need, which is Halo Unpack Chore Gen, so it's Chore, here, Chore Gen. I think from here. Because I'm not mistaken. Where's that other uh, Visual Studio at? Chore Gen level. Yes, yeah, so we need levels. So the path to Gen. So the root path will be here. Obviously, eventually, I'm probably going to, like, make it to where it's. So we're going to print object one. So I, we have that. Now, where is that? Where's that code that I. Did I save that somewhere? Whatever, I can get it again. So export. So import render model, which is BPY ops infinite render model. E ops dot infant. And that's what we want to call the other add-on that imports everything. So now that we have that, we come over here. There we go. Uh, what's the, see, this is where that actually would come in handy. Python for loop. What's the syntax for the for loop? For x, okay, yeah, I remember now. For x in Actually, Let's not loop it yet. Let's do object one dot file path. Oh yeah, I should probably combine the two. Might be a good idea. Wait, 
Wait, are you gonna make me F string it? What do you mean expecting? What do you mean F string expecting? I don't understand. Boom, 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 boom. If I add data in the middle of it, it's gonna still yell, it still yells at me. So what's what? What if I make, what if I do this? You still going to yell at me over some bullshit? No. I swear to God, sometimes, man. you mean what's the problem here Expect an indent. So it's yelling about the Reno file, correct? Okay. Really, can you not stream Ken got, got shit?
Let's place the string on the enum and evoke default evoke. I don't know, man. Why is it broken? Okay, here. Let's try this. What happens now? I see the problem. I don't know if I need to do that or not. So we copy this and we see if it actually loads it. Another error has occurred in the path. If I forward slash all of these, does it work? No, so that's not the problem. It, it, I'm sure Windows is Windows just works. So wait, what's the what's the problem here? What, hold on, let's go Z. So we go Halo. Halo data. Chore. Gen double underscore levels assets shiva unsc props ac unit underscore large Oh, I think what's happening here is it's um Where's my Visual Studio code 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 Somewhere on some of these Oh, I'm an idiot. I'm trolling pretty hard right now. I think. Or am I? I need to look into some of these and understand why because we're getting some of this data is not what you think it is some of the structure isn't right which maybe I'm reading different tags more than I'm different than I'm supposed to item id
item ID levels. Because you see the file path here, this one, it's a duplicate here. This is the actual path. This isn't. So do it down here. Yes, it does. Okay. Levels, assets, Shiva design. Wait, I'm not checking if these exist. Am I not checking if these fucking exist? Over here? Is it soup yet? I don't know if that's a typo. I don't. I don't. You gonna execute program? You're gonna take your sweet ass. Th there we go. Oh, um, we know that should have worked. What did that work? Okay, that worked. Okay. What? Ryder, what are you doing? Ryder, what are you doing? So the static model path. Oh. I see what's happening.
So I need to remove the last part of the string. Oh, no, it's just that. What am I doing? Not that button. Does not exist in the current context, you're fucking drunk. Why is it does it not exist in the current context? That's fucking insane. I don't, what does self last actually do? This is really, don't do this. to join that's right
This is fucking monkey as fuck, but we take these. Once I get this part of it done, I'm probably going to go. There we go. Easy. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be depressing when it's all for nothing when it takes like six months for it to be actually working but yeah good night josh actually no join with join with a forward slash what am i doing why am i joining with a backslash There we go. That's the data we need. So now we actually, we just run this without debug. And then we select this and now it's going to run and do its thing. I think. Did something happen? I don't know. How do you know if something happened? <laughs> I didn't make anything pop up when it's done. At 1040? Oh yeah, it's done. Okay. So we copy this up. No, no, no. Copy the whole file up. Paste it here. Replace. Did I not close this in his in blender here? I don't think I closed it. What else is open in it? Oh, Visual Studio, maybe. It's open. In, it is open in Blender.
Super sandwich. I don't get it. Dynamic expert forge. Now, does that path actually point somewhere? It fucking does. Okay. So let's go add to the C sharp side of things to actually get the render model of that path as well. Since now we know that path is valid and working, I should actually just keep offload most of the stuff I can to the C sharp side as if I as I can. So when we set this, let's go to the forge object model. So the render model path. Will be equal to. I had this over here. Directory dot get files. And what is the type we care about? Is is it dot render underscore model or is it? There's only one render model in here, right? These are, yeah, there's more to that. Okay, so it should be, this is the only one we care about, which should only be ever be one dot render model per file, I hope. We can't set that to that. We need to get um
Okay. Wait, what? Or what what the fuck the prop what happened here? I'm confused. Not the wrong button again. Oh, I see. I'm going to hard code this for now, like a monkey. Could not find part of the path. Classic. The easy forget the last forward slash of that. What happened here? Let's hold errors in placeholder.
so. Continues what I think it does, right? Fine. It's just curly brace it. Shit. All right, so I got to figure out the different types. This is going to be a pain in the ass because I'm pretty sure some of these tags are not the the, the not some of these tags are not created equal. Where's the last valid? So what broke here? What is the file path that was passed in? The, it was the assault rifle long shot. And then what about the string table?
the rifle assault rifle configurations. I don't know what that's I don't know what that's relative to. Fuck. So I need to figure these out because some of the, clearly some of these items are relative to other things. So I need to get. Oh, let me read this again because wasn't that right? Open this in the hex editor. Objects is there. In this case, we're only getting right. <laughs> Why are we almost... We're 16 bytes off almost. Well, we are. Why is the string tone? Why is that out of scope here? No, it's not. Okay, there it is. So 
Son of a bitch. This is such a bitch, man. I'm off by a bit. Which means the uh, issue is either something with... It could be... The string table size being one one seven, is that correct? What's seventy three in hex? One f I'm so fucking confused. One one seven. Funny enough. So assuming that's it, so it begins and ends with a zero. The data before this might be fucky because that comes out to be uh, 70, uh, that comes out to be 70, 177. So that's clearly the data is there so we're off by some bytes on what's before so the string table the tag reference count is six It could be an, an issue with this because I don't think there's many objects with a tag reference count. Let's go verify that this is correct. Int, 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 and int. One, two, three, four ints. Okay. Let's double check that we're not reading something that we shouldn't be on the tag reference. I need to clean this up. This is impossible to read. Is are we on, is this an off by one? If this was equal to one, no, I don't think that. Okay, let's look at data reference list then.
an int, an int, an int. They're all ints. Tag block data. Which we have the four ints for that. The short. Shortest type, a short is an unknown, an int, an int, and an int, an int, an int, an int. But what tag block type? Oh no, that's just any num. What about the nugget? If this isn't the case, then we're a lot we have a logic error then. Inside. So int short short long. Yeah. Int 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 int. U int and a U long and two ints. Okay. The tag dependency list. We have one from the, we have attack we have one in tag dependency count. We have two nuggets, fourteen tag blocks, zero data reference. Okay. Maybe we have a logic error. The zone set start is 8.13. So let's go see if that's truly the zone set start and see if everything's fucked. Yeah, 16 bytes of just, we're offset by 16 bytes. Okay, let's check the header. The tag dino, uh, I don't know why it's broken. I think I'm going to call it though.
Okay, I'm calling it. Note to myself for when I look at this again, which is probably going to be a few days. Because <laughs> I'm trying to... I'm, that, like, I get it's the Assault Rifle Long Shot Forge object data. That being broken might not be a big deal. It might be. I don't know. Because, I mean, if most of the objects are fine, but I really want to get all of them, but this one particular one being fucked makes me think that there's, like, some logic issue somewhere. So I'm just going to, like, I guess next time I do it, I'll just do the offset. Uh, I'll check and see what could possibly offset it by 16 bytes. Or 15 bytes. Because I think it's something to do. It's because maybe the case. It, there's all like basically every single one of these. Uh, there's like there's a tag there's a tag dependency. There's a, there's nuggets. There's also tag blocks. There's also ta there's no tag instances, but there's also tag references. Basically, I'm pretty sure like the tag instances have had it before, but I don't think it's one of these. One of these might not exist on other objects, and maybe it does, and there's, like, some weird shit going on with, like, the reading of it or whatever. Or maybe, like, the tag reference count. The data... Data reference count. The tag data alignment. So I'm not sure. I got to figure that out. I mean, it could be a pro. It could be an issue, or it could be that there's like two or three items that are like this, and then those I could just do manually by hand. But uh, I'll be live tomorrow. I'm just gonna go ahead and like commit this so it's at least there. Uh, Okay. I'm calling it. See you guys tomorrow. Oh wait, that's the wrong thing. Where's Team Viewer? Hey, it like kinda balanced out. We didn't really we didn't skip any frames. Now that I'm in Team Viewer and the tough's open we are. So that's good. I'll take it as though there's no, I don't think there was any big technical issues today. All right, stop streaming, stop recording, stop recording the audio over here.